I give, I give you praise. Oh, give him thanks. Give him thanks, somebody. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, Jesus. I give you thanks. I give you thanks. For all you've done. For all you've done. I am so blessed. And the soul is at rest. The soul is at rest. We, we give you thanks. Oh, Lord, oh, Lord, I give you thanks. I give you thanks. Father, we thank you. We give you glory for tonight. Your name be exalted. We come against every cognitive dissonance. I interfere with every agenda of Satan to resist the word of God. And I declare the word of God is received. Is received. It produces results in our midst. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we call it done. Amen. Everybody clap your hands and give God praise. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Learning to spend time with God. Now, I'm going to teach you some things that might be a little disturbing, but please listen to what I have to say. Waiting on God, spending time with God, is a lost art in the church of God. We have come to a place in our living as Christians, we have become modulized for activity. That means that we have been trained to do, 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 and not grow, 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 grow. So people have been in church for a long time. They have been Christians for 20 years, 30 years. Let me give you an example. Um, all right. Am I okay now? Is my sound okay now? All right. Let me give you an example. Two people can have a conversation, speak the same English, speak the same dialect. But in that conversation, the level of your growth will determine the release of life. Unfortunately, we don't even know how to measure life in conversation. People just talk. They don't, they don't know when there is life coming out in a conversation. The, the proof of life is after every conversation, you are edified to look for God. You are stirred up. You are encouraged. You are energized for spiritual activity. That is the proof of life. And life feeds your spirit, not your head. So you can converse with somebody and it's just information discussion. But there's a conversation that after you are done, something has happened to your body. Something has, something has, you have been energized. That is life. And because we don't even know the magnitude of that transaction in the body of Christ, we have not learned how to become systems or career of words that carry life. So most of our conversations kill people's dreams. Most of our comments make people feel incompetent. Anytime someone leaves you, they feel hopeless, confused. Because we have not learned how to trade in life. Amen? No matter what anyone has done, huh, we must be custodians of the patterns of Christ. What would Jesus do to a woman caught in prostitution? What would Jesus do? To the extent that God makes her the first to see him after resurrection. That means that there are so many attitudes we have in the church. Eh? It is a, it's, it's a disdainful posture that Christ will not exhibit to someone who falls. We don't even know how to relate to people who are falling. Imagine God forbid somebody gets pregnant here. Eh, the person will feel uncomfortable because eyes will roam. And the irresponsibility on spirituality of useless comments. No, I, I asked you a question. So when you said what you said and the person decided not to come to church again, do you know if the person goes to hell, you give an account? Oh yeah, you are responsible. Your words took someone from the fold. Then God will weigh how many you want versus how many you set away. Yes. Think about it. So when you see a pastor, oh, I know that, pa I know that guy. I know this girl. They are, they are bad. No, no, it's not your business. The church is not for perfect people. It's for perfecting people. 
We are here to perfect people. You that you are pointing hand, there are things in your life. The pornography you watch, have you finished? Yeah, because you have not slept with anybody, we, you think we don't know what you do. You, you, you are doing things. What are you talking about? Amen. So, I'm, I'm, I'm sharing you something that is, I, I, and I told you that, you see, um, I, I heard people praying for me that God should help me so that in all the things I go through, and we are not going anywhere. <laughs> do you understand? <laughs> yeah, because the point is this. Long ago, I signed that warrant that anything Paul, anything Peter, uh, James, the Apostle John, God found them worthy to enjoy. Me too, I want it. Now, what do you think? I can't enter heaven and it will be written on my face that I'm a 21st century Christian. Like I'm a dad about Christian. No, 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 no. You have to have scars. You remember what Dr. Joe said? Yes, you have, to, you have to show in heaven that this is what I also went through for the Lord. What do you think? That means that you see, God, I've told you before, the first time I had a car, somebody scratched me. I've driven for many years. Nobody has scratched my car till 2017. Was it 17 or 18? Yeah. Then I asked God, why? I'm going for, I was going for a retreat. Oh. Then Lagos, so okay, I don't know if he's converted now, but that, at that time, that foolish boy crossed me. <laughs> you know and he didn't cross me at, you know, there's a way you cross, overtake a car. He, you know, you come this way. He came from my blind side and crossed me that way. And now I followed him to International something something Hostel. That, that one, uh -huh, opposite. Ish. I went there and this boy started to follow him. When we got to the traffic light that we are going to his mechanic, oof, oof, he was driving a Camaro, black one. I remember the car. <laughs> Sped off. And he had scratched my car. I was like, and I got to the retreat. I went to see my father and the Lord was, so we just, I went to join him for a retreat. And when I got there, I said, Daddy, see what has happened? He laughed. And I also laughed. I said, God has worked on me. You know why I said that? Before I will go home. That the car jammed. I won't pray again. I'll go home. I'll go and think, ah, where did I go wrong? Who did I offend? Do you know what it happened? The first thing God said to me says, you are now grown. So you can suffer an accident. You'll be shocked. Oh, my God. That's why some of you, when I tell you the things I've been through, you will not be a Christian again. Oh, yeah, you will not be a Christian. Some of you can't, and, I got, and I, this happened to me, I said, hey, hey, hey. We too, they have done it to us too. And we are still standing here. What do you think? Yeah, so we are, we are raising a certain, so obviously the devil will not be happy. Huh? Yeah, because what we are praying, today somebody came to my office, he says a doctor at um, Lekma. And he has been listening to me online. I don't know. He said, you don't know me. I don't. He said, he said oh, my name is Susan. So he gave me an envelope that God said I should bring you a seed. When I look on the envelope, he has a doctor. Something. I said, oh, wow, you're a doctor. I said, yes. He said, that's why I've not been able to come to service. I've been watching online. But very soon, I'll be done with my rotation. I'll come. I said, oh, that's powerful. So there are people watching us. And I don't even know them. How many are we here? Then you go online, 4,000, 1,000 people are watching us. Like one service. Who, are, who is watching? <laughs> <laughs> I was, who is watching? Because you, you watch once. Because you were alive, you didn't even watch. <laughs> so who, who has been watching for it to become 2,000 or 5,000? Yeah, it's not you. <laughs> you know it's not you. It's another person watching that. Thing. You know. That's why every time you see three times, hey, who are those? Are you understanding? You know it is not you who has watched that thing. But, you know, all I'm trying to tell you is, is that, so obviously, we stand in a place where, um, to decide to go against the current of typical church operation, there will be arrows from within and from without. Paul said it, I was in perils of my own fellow brethren. Fellow brethren, countrymen, and external Gentiles. See, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So pray for us. It's a good prayer, amen? I said it's a good prayer. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Because me, I'll tell you the truth. And we'll go for a retreat. Amen? Amen. Praise God. Amen. amen, amen. Amen. When he brought it to me, I said, oh, that's powerful. And I look at God. I said, God, you are funny. Oh. You know, because I told you that. God has told me that. Any money I get from the 1st of January <laughs> to the 15th of January, it's not for me. It's the truth. It's the gospel truth. It's the gospel truth. Any money you bring to me is not, I won't touch it. I'm, I, have, I have not even counted it. It's in an envelope still. It's for God. So after the first come, Daddy, this is a seed for the new year. It's for Jesus. 
We have that contract already. My first fifth half of the year, half of January goes to Jesus Christ. It determines a lot. I'm going to show you something today. Now, when the situation happened to me and all my money in the house psh, went, I came to service. You know, and when I came to service, God said, this year you must increase your offering. <laughs> <laughs> no, listen, do you know why I'm t- sharing the things I'm sharing with you? Dr. George gave us an instruction. Those who begin speedily, some of you are still at resting mood, and we are on the day eight. No, you are still at resting mood. You, you, oh, you cannot blame God if you violate his ways. Please, it's a simple thing. Next, this year I'll preach on legalities part three. I will show you the technology of forgiveness and consequence. There are some sins you are forgiving, but the consequence you meet. No, do you have to understand it? No, 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 no. No sex is free. Oh, no, somebody will pay. And it's not about, you see, <clears throat> I said this year I'll touch on it. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? If you go and eat spoiled food, no matter how holy it goes, you run. That means you have sinned against your body. Consequence. There's consequence. There's consequence. Consequence, maybe you say, somebody has just, the, the, it's your consequence. Yeah. I'll touch on it this year. So, you know, you understand. You understand. Otherwise, this Christian life, when you do, 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 it's like, ah, God, is he lying? Is there grace? Is he, has he really forgiven me? Because you don't understand. That's the wisdom behind the fact that a man will always reap what he sows. Listen, if somebody is not your beloved, don't go and use your mouth to break them up. You have planted something. You have planted, there's a consequence. <laughs> you have planted something. You reap it. One of the, I mean, a long time ago, if I hear you are dating, when I call you, hello, how are you doing? Is everything okay? How is your beloved? When was the last time you spoke to him? When I realized there has been a deficit, E-O-R-E. <laughs> now, I'm not come to help you to cope. <laughs> Before next week, you know, if I realize that your beloved does not really love you, I'm the one who loves you. It's not true. This is love by circumstance. Praise the Lord. And bra, don't be David. You have 70 chickens. Somebody's one a acroma, is it a guinea pig or guinea fowl. Somebody's one a confess. You know, a confess is very slim like that. Yeah. That's one thing I realized about Ghana. Be careful what they celebrate in Ghana. They used to say, I confess, I confess, till I ate one. I was disappointed. You can't break the bone. I confess. Sure, I didn't even understand. When you finish pulling the, the animal, is almost, it's, uh, it's ash or it's black. You don't even know what kind of bed is this. And that is what every Ghanaian was happy about, Akon Fenam. Amen. Amen. The other one that I don't even understand is grass cutter. <laughs> Look, ask my wife. Oh, do you want grass cutter? I say, I don't want. It's, it's a confusing creature. <laughs> no, it's not goat. It doesn't taste like goat. <laughs> what are you doing in my mouth? It's like it's like it's a goat on slimendite. <laughs> it's a goat on ketone diet. It's not eating anything so to be fat. It's just friend. Hallelujah. And I'm a boy. It doesn't have a flavor. It has its own flavor, but there's a flavor of a goat. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> so spending time with God, learning to spend time with God. Why is this so important? Look, it matters eh, your posture to God. If you take God seriously, eh, every year my father calls me, gives me a prophetic word for on my birthday. But this year he called me on January and said, this is what the Lord said about you. And these are things I saw when I was praying before I came for the first. When he started sharing it, the Holy Ghost said, this is why Satan came. No, no, I'm telling you. The things he said, I said, that's why. That's why the devil came. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's something when you see, you know it's reaction. 
The devil is trying to just rat rattle you a little bit. It's not. Amen? Amen. But God is smart. Amen. Exodus 22 says, when you steal five cows, when you steal one cow, you pay five. <laughs> no <laughs> consequence. <laughs> In the law of restitution, Exodus 22, it says, if you steal somebody's ox and they catch you, you will pay five. You will bring five. If you steal a sheep, you will bring four. Do you know the part that even amused me when I was reading it? He said that when you even catch the person who stole and you have redeemed your things, the person will still pay twice as much. That means that in any case, whether the items are recovered or not recovered, there's always more than what you lost coming to you. That means when you even cut the thief, God will still give you twice times two. Oh, I said, God, you are good. So sometimes God sets you up for double. Amen. I said, sometimes God sets you up for double. Amen, amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You see, when it's found alive, you have not killed it yet, alive. You will pay two. Just for stealing. Mental torture. Despair. Security check. You will pay times two. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Okay, so let's learn how to spend time with God. Why must we learn how to spend time with God? Why must we learn how to spend time with God? What is the reason behind this? You see, when God created man, the habitat for man has always been God. Check the Bible. The day man sinned and left God's presence, man began to die. So, the difference is that because man has a spirit, the decay rate is slower than a fish out of water. But even with the fish out of water, there are categories of fishes. When you take a typical grouper, what you call um, redfish. Is that grouper? Is grouper redfish? Snapper. Red, redfish is snapper. Okay, there's a grouper, there's a snapper, and all that. When you take those fishes out, because they use something called fin, uh, fins and gills, and they need water to release oxygen, they cannot breathe when they come out of water. Because their oxygen is diluted in the water. But when you have the whales, you have those mammals who give birth without laying eggs. And the whales actually hold their breath underwater for hours. So when you see the whale come to the surface and pff, that air is pushing out, it's taking in new air and goes under the water for hours. Crocodile, all those creatures, they come out, breathe, go down. So those creatures, when they come to the soil or to the earth, you check it. A crocodile can breathe outside water, you notice, but cannot survive outside it. The kind of life the form of the creature has can afford it to stay longer outside water, but that can be deception. That because you have been outside water and you are breathing, even the mad fish can hibernate in mud without water for months. Yet if water does not come within a season, it will die in hibernation. Is that what I'm talking about? Yeah. That tells you that the fact that you see people living life without retribution, without consequence, does not mean that's how God designed man. Man left his presence, but the fact that he's walking up and down does not mean that he is not dying. The longer he stays out of it, very soon it will start kicking in. To start kicking in. Because he spoke to the water and it produces fish. He spoke to the sky, it produced birds. He spoke to the earth and the beast came. When he came to man, he spoke to God's head. God said, let us. First he said, let the earth bring forth beasts. Let the sky bring forth birds. Let the waters give birth to fishes of all kinds. Then when he came to man, he said, let as the Godhead produce another after a kind. That means that the Godhead was the habitat, was the source, was the location of man. 
So child of God, your inability to spend time with God is just a death sentence that is rolling out silently. Somebody can be in prison for 50 years, but he's on death row. Now you ask yourself a simple question. Why don't they kill the guy straight away? Why? I have some lawyers here. I have to do some discussion with them. Why? Is it to change the person? Must he make peace with God? In fact, even in legal parlance, you'll be shocked that it is in a legal parlance a lot of Godhood is exhibited. Yet they are the ones who fight God the most. Such an amazing thing. Because the very thing that makes them found their law is based on the Ten Commandments. And aside the Ten Commandments, they are using a lot of biblical terminologies they themselves don't realize they are using. Yes, and I'll explain to you as we go. Amen. Amen. So, the fact that you are not dying, uh, you're still marrying, you're still giving birth, you're still doing a lot of things, does not mean that you are not dead or you are not dying. You are dying. I'll give you a typical example. There is a certain unexplainable depression that comes on a person who has a new job, a new spouse, just giving birth, traveled outside the country. They have everything they need. Why are you depressed? Highest depression and suicide rates is overseas, not in Ghana. Yeah. I mean, psychologists did a test and found out that most third world country citizens have a more happier, fulfilled life than those in foreign countries. First world, second world. Why? May God deliver you from that poverty mentality. <laughs> and I said, like, how? How? Go and stay there. You understand? You don't understand. You've not stayed there. Some of my people went to France. They tell you, in France, everybody minds his business. Who oh, yeah. You think it's nice? No. You can't be help somebody say, I want to help you. It's for what? I call you browser. Oh, don't touch me. They can't even report you for helping. Yes. You are helping for what? They arrested somebody recently in America. You know why? He went to water his neighbor's farm. Oh, yeah. His, <coughs> they came and he was watering somebody's garden. They arrested him <laughs> for trespassing. <laughs> hey, it's, it's not Ghana. It's not Ghana. If my farm is die, let it die. <laughs> that you are come to help, they arrested him. I'm telling you. So the system is designed. That, you see, uh, not, we won't even get to the sociology of that. All the things, the movies, the Netflix, um, 700 plus channels, is designed to make you isolated. And it's in isolation Satan can have you. I'm telling you. You are not designed to be an island. Isolation will make them control your mind. Because if you are in your room alone, you can't start a revolution. You need people to say, that thing that they do, no good. Yes! Before you realize it. Sometimes when you're alone, it's not come to your mind. That is not a big deal. Somebody has to say something for it. Ah, it's true. What you are doing is wrong. So they know what to do to put you in a certain place to program you. Some of you running, you want to go to America, you want to go to London, and God has bounced you. It's not, painful. It's not God's wickedness. You have no idea the story there. Oh, you have no idea. Check any reasonable man of God, any person who is in Africa, you see that they don't like to stay there. They go and hang out for a while, they'll come back home. Ghana, you can walk anywhere and do Azibiri. America, they will arrest you. What is the Azibiri? Don't do psychoanalysis, they'll inject you. <laughs> and you'll be shouting, go and ask the Ghanaians who are in psychiatric ward in America. I hand you a bomb pie, Nancy. Oh boy. Oh yeah, we prayer work. A bad shoes is here on Tiazi. A Holocaust man, God, the freak, I bet you. They find a stray dog. They have home for dogs that are stray. That you're skipping that, you'll go in the night and go and sleep with Auntie Marcel's dog and come in the morning. They'll arrest him in America. What do you mean? That in the night, you just, the dog, skip you, pass under the gate. Hey, this is your dogs. You see him lying at your gate, briefly. Ha, 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 ha. Skippy, where did you go? He alone knows what he has done. Two months later, you see junior Skippy's everywhere. He doesn't sleep at night. In America, if like try it, even if the dog is in front of your gate, you arrest him. So put him in a cage right now, you'll be shocked. Amen. So the fact that you see things thriving and things doing well does not mean he's not dying. Hmm. You can beautifully die. <laughs> you are, oh, but you are dying. 
Do you understand? So the fact that it seems as if without God, things work, is the highest deception of the devil. Because answer me then. If things work without God, then why is there any time you want to take God seriously? Satan mounts up higher opposition. He knows you are come to enter a reality. Eh? If he doesn't stop you, there'll be a problem. If he doesn't stop you, there'll be a problem. Praise the Lord. I, I'm explaining to you the basis and the reason why we need to learn how to spend time with God. Of course, I'll give you the various points to do this year because I said to you this year, um, there's a prophecy, I think they put on the page, of mercenaries coming to Ghana. Farming has come. Hear me, farming. 2020, we're crossing to 2021. I remember blue and white. The doctor stood and said, Salak. And the Lord said, agricultural blessings. If you have a land, please plant staple foods. I'm begging you. You are not ready to build. You start doing some maize. Put something there. Farming has come. It's not coming. It's come. You remember that, that if, if you are wise, you start planting your tomatoes. When you finish killing your tomatoes in the stew, pour the seed in your backyard. Let it grow without you even. Do you see that some creatures and some plants, they grow without you permitting them? Just pour it there. Let it grow. After two weeks, you see something green has applied. You just allow it. Keep watering it. After a month, when they tell you that a lunka is now 400 cities, you know that you have some in the backyard. Yeah. Listen, to, do you see how I prophesy? Yeah. I'll be talking, 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 talking. I've said it. Because <laughs> you want me to go, um, in the year uh, uh, 17, things are going to happen. Then I said, hey, it's not like that. Hey, it's not like that. If you can't hear prophecy in conversation, then you have, a, uh, you have to catch up. Yeah. Some people have learned that thing. When I'm talking, I'm joking. They say, prophet, this is your joke. That's how you are joking. Then, ah. Uh, I reverse it in Jesus' name. Hey. The student teach the teacher. It's consequence. Like play, like play. Like play, like play. So. I gave a prophecy in 2020, 2021 about the dollar rate. How many of you remember that? I told you something about the dollar rate. I told you what the dollar is going to do in Ghana. I said, buy dollars. Buy it. And I gave you, I told you many things were going to happen during this period. The dollar will fluctuate, open the door, open every time it fluctuated. Buy it. Now it's galloping again. It's 12. It's going. Now it has gone. Did I see this thing? It was two weeks old. It was two weeks. I told you after Christmas, January, up away, we are going. No way on me. Well, yeah. <laughs> When we get to administration, you understand what I'm talking about. Someone doesn't understand here. Google it. <laughs> Amen. So, God is our environment. God is our environment. One of the things I've prayed to God for a long time, I was talking to a dear lady of mine. She was telling me that, Prophet, it's like when you hold the mic, sometimes things change. It's when she's, those things, you know what? I have prayed. I don't think it's enough. I've truly, truly prayed for a long time that, Father, I want this thing called your presence eh? and actually your power to affect electromagnetic flow. No, I want... very uh, Listen, you come to a place, huh? you are walking on a stage and there is nothing here and without you realizing you are walking on solid ground in the air and you didn't plan it. The light will go off, but your mic is still working. And the people, they're asking, what's happening? Your electromagnet. No, that God must be ego Keep A man who spends time with God, there is too much. You know. They are very intimidating. They can be sure, but when they stand in front of you, it's like something's, something's like, it's, sometimes they are tall, but it's not their height. There's a, there's a weight sitting on you, like when you're talking to the person, something is resting. It's like you, what else you laugh, laugh you, like you are feeling nervous. It's God's presence. I'm telling you something. If you've ever experienced it talking to me before, it's the presence of God. It's electricity from heaven. It's, it's passing you, it's doing your. <laughs> God 
God's presence is your habitat. Put that in the back of your mind. God's presence is your habitat. Say God's presence is my habitat. Say God's presence is my habitat. Now, especially for this year, hear me something. Hear me as we, we go on. Don't think that because there's a new year, God has, God has finished his work with you in 2022. Please listen to what I'm saying very well. A lot of you make that mistake that a new year starts. Oh, we are going, we are starting afresh. It's my year of, uh, uh, I own this word, of the cross. Mm, if it's, not, it's not sweet. <laughs> mm, cross the, mm, Charlie, Charlie, the cross. Mm, what, what is cross? Uh, my year of plenty. My year of thanksgiving. My year. It's nice, but you are kind of. <laughs> The point I'm trying to bring your mind to is this, that the fact that the new year starts does not mean that an old work of God has been completed. Don't run away from the dealings of God. Some of you, your scorecard in the spirit, eh? incomplete, incomplete, incomplete. Because in. when the things start, you have started a new, it's a new year, it's a new year. Oh, this is my year. Oh, this year, this year. Oh, my. Uh, yeah. In the spirit, your years don't begin by the change of dates. I've told you. They begin by the dealings of God and the timings of seasons he has apportioned. If you don't decode this thing, you, years will pass. You will be at the same spot for a long time. So, like I said, God willing, next week we will not meet. 22nd we will not meet. We will be back on the 29th. I'm praying that around 29th, Baba Delvan will come. But he told me that he wants to, yeah, so I'm praying. I'm going to call him to tell him that, Baba, you come 29. So that when we are coming, it's in gathering service. Then Chris Delvan will come himself. Uh, you know, Baba, dear, he can throw the bullet, tell you something right now. The lion has shown you his claws. Who remembers that message? Shown the claws. So if you are leaving now, you're not serious. <laughs> now, what I'm trying to bring your mind to is this, that and bring your mind to something, right? The year ending does not mean God has ended with you. I said what? So I'll give somebody an advice today. If you got to 50%, 45%, anybody who read the Bible 30% beyond what is written, and you got to 30% Bible reading, and you couldn't complete to 100%, that is the season you have to continue. Don't restart. Unless you were 10% or 15% below. But once you were 30%, that means one third of the Bible you had covered. Please don't restart. You had read over 300 chapters. Please listen to me. Don't restart. If you do 10 chapters every day for the next three months, you'll be able to catch up and finish the Bible by March or April. Hear what I'm saying very well. Why am I saying what I'm saying? If you don't creating yourself a culture to complete, you will not be able to complete this year. Because you will always get to a point where you are stuck again. You have trained yourself four years consistently. You always get to 30% and you never cross it. So there are some people, that's why I say this thing every time Prophet Nana is coming. That Prophet Nana is going to come in April. And before he comes in April, try and finish the Bible. Why? Why? So that you can because if you do 10 chapters a day, you use three months to finish the Bible. You know that? 10 chapters you finish the Bible, three months. That means anybody who reads 10 chapters every day can finish the Bible three times every year. You can finish the Bible three times every year if you read 10 chapters every day. And boy, boy, don't say you don't have time. You, you just don't make time. Oh, you got to go to your phone. How many times you've checked your phone? I mean, listen, please. Why we have gotten to stop saying, you know, we are social creatures. We need to mingle with people. <laughs> try, try. Yeah. Once the time bites you, tell him we need to mingle. <laughs> yeah, you'll see that. <laughs> Satan will bite you alone. He doesn't bite the team. He bites you alone. Listen to what I'm trying to say. So if you have done 3%, 40%, you got to half of the Bible, you couldn't finish. Please, I'm advising you, finish it. Finish it so at least by February, you know, you finish what. That's why I said to you, so many of you, you truncate, you stop, you truncate what God started last year because you think the calendar has changed. Then you try to start something God has not started. 
So chances are that you are obviously not going to finish because it was not God's start. Hey. I really prayed for all of you that what I'm going to teach you there, you take it as life and death. Sometimes as prophets, eh, we can see that it's over for people. Not because God can't give redemption. Because even the prodigal son, God gave a second chance. But in the second chance of the prodigal son, there was the enterprise of realization. Some people, God has given them second chance, but they don't even realize that they have wasted three years. And if they don't change their mind, this thing called 2023, the same thing will repeat itself. The same story. Nothing will change. So it's not that God can redeem some people. Awake, old sleeper. Arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you light. So it is you. Huh? But it is, the energy is, of course, it's passive, but there's a flow of an energy in a season where God tells you, listen, you have delayed. This is the light. Awake and arise is a response to the light that has come into you. Then the fullness of that light will show you that you were not wise. You were not circumspect. You didn't walk cunningly. You allowed anything to happen. So the years have wasted. It's time to redeem it. This is where it looks like some people, if you don't take care, for the next 30 years, one error they made will keep them in the hole for a long time. Because they don't realize that there is a season when, when you are being redeemed, you don't joke. You don't have... Somebody can misbehave with seven tries. Have you ever written an exam before? And then you shared that wrong answer. Then you erase it. Then you shade another wrong answer, erase it. Then they tell you that the paper they are using, the machine picks the stencil. That means chances are that you have shaded all the five, A, B, C, D, E. If the machine picks it, the machine is even confused when you choose B because you have overshaded. Mm. Or you are answering the question, sir. Then, by mistake, you put saliva <laughs> on the eraser. And as you start erasing, it's class. <laughs> so <laughs> you don't know whether to write A <laughs> and put in your own bracket. Whether the machine will pick it or not. You see, that's what I'm trying to say. So if you don't realize that in the season of redemption and renewal, you have to be circumspect. Ooh. Because if you tip off, you might not be able to recover. It is impossible for them, not for God, for them, not for God. The problem of redemption is not a God problem. It's a man problem. Man always has a problem seeing that God will forgive them no matter how far they go. Because sometimes, you notice what happens. You ask God for forgiveness once, forgiveness twice. So there's a teaching. One time is a mistake. Two time was oversight. Third time, hmm, temptation. Four time, Decision. <laughs> Five time choice. Six time character. So by the time you have done a thing over seven times, to you, it is you. God can forgive. Because you've done it too many times. That means that the brain and the conscience has a certain dimension. When it gets to, it's not even allowing you to collect forgiveness that God is giving. That's why sometimes God goes like, it's not that I won't forgive you. Where you are going, you will make it hard for you to receive it. Because you have shared, your conscience is like, I'm finished. It's too late. There's nothing God will do. This is my lot. This is my punishment. And God is not part of that talk. Go read all the history people who said the fire left them, a dove left them. It was not God who said it. They said they saw that God left them. And if he makes his bed in hell with you, is it you that has become hell that God will not? <laughs> Even hell, he says he is there. Psalm 139. If I go to hell, thou art there. So there's nothing here. Look, you were in the club smoking shisha. And a voice said to you, take me serious. If in your shisha mood, the Holy Ghost could communicate. Is it in your Holy Ghost mood he can't talk? No, you see, so it's your mind. Your mind warps God. And because it has morphed God, it can't receive redemption. Ha! Dinimi pa. Just, just, I can into the man's house Jesus. Just wave to the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm telling you. <laughs> Amen. To but now you know the Why? That's how you master. Even when God is saying, "I forgive you," that's the prodigal son's problem. Do you hear what he said? I'm not fit. 
Meanwhile, to whilst he was saying he's not fit, his father was waiting for him. Imagine it. His father was waking up every morning. It's my son coming, yet the boy was in the bush saying, I'm not fit. This is the problem with God and man. Sin makes you feel you're not fit, yet God is always stretching his head. When will he take me again? When will he accept me again? When will he be ready for my redemption? But his mind is telling him I'm not fit. Do you know he said, I'll tell my father, I've sinned against you and against God. And whatever I've done, make me like your servant. When he got there, he was about to rehearse it. He did it. Well, there's no, I don't know what Bible you use. The Bible I used, huh? in Luke chapter 15, there's no record that the prodigal son was able to tell the father I'm sorry. The father didn't even let him say sorry. Because the father was working in advance forgiveness. But Satan will make you feel like even if God receives you, you see, consequence. This is one of the consequences. Sometimes the consequence is not even that God is punishing you. The consequence is that your mind is so destroyed, it can't receive salvation. It has become so dirty, so tired, it can't even receive redemption. Consequence. Jesus Christ. Let me comport myself. Amen. Amen. So, the habitat we have been given is God. But beyond the habitat, the Bible says in Genesis chapter 2 verse 15 that God put Adam in a garden and said he should dress the garden and keep it. Notice what scripture said in Romans 5. When Adam sinned, creation also sinned. Creation was not made subject to vanity really, but by reason of the same that subjected creation into that damnation. What it meant was that God was mirroring creation in Adam. Whatever was outside Adam was actually inside Adam. So when Adam ate the fruit, creation ate the fruit. The horse ate the fruit. The lion ate the fruit. The trees ate the fruit. It was in Adam. So I'll show you a key today. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9, the Bible says, let's go there. 1 Corinthians 3, 9. Yeah, yeah, let's go there. What does it say? What does it say? Read together. One to go. Mm-hmm. Now, husband is a little heavy. Let's check. Let's check. Let's check another version. Find another version. Yeah, Amplify. Wonderful. Let's read together. One to go. Uh huh. You are what? His, his vineyard. So you walking there, you are God's garden. Now listen to this. He put Adam in a garden, but Adam was also a garden. Mm. Proverbs 15 4. Proverbs 15 4. Proverbs 15 4. Look at this. In that garden was a certain tree. Proverbs 15 4 says what? The tongue is what? So in your mouth is the tree of life. This is why when God said, dress the garden and keep it, dress. Dress the garden and keep it. Dress the garden and keep it. Dress the garden. Dress. Dress. There's a garden in a garden. Dress the garden. So Adam, if you fail to dress yourself, you cannot dress what is outside you. That's why (laughs) where you stay is called address. Oh my God. Your environment is what is inside you. Oh yeah. If there's chaos around you, things are going bad, check inside. There's something you're not dressing. That's why outside is looking by heart. Yeah, it's true. Now, if these are the indicators, then it tells me that every time I spend time with God, I receive my dressing. And when I now receive my dressing, I can affect my addressing. I can affect my external address. What is this picture of my dressing? Now the externals of me can receive it. Somebody here? Yeah. Oh, is somebody here? Yeah. Wave your hands to Jesus Christ. Are we together? Yes, I said, are we together? Are we together? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. I'll give you another word. 
There's this powerful word we use all the time. Confirmation. Deformation. Reformation. Now, there are suffixes. Re, con, D. But there's another one that's also a suffix that we often don't take notice of. Information. So everything you are hearing as an information is forming something inside you. Nothing you are hearing is for fun. Nothing you are hearing is for fun. Information. So the thing you think is a, a news, is a message, is a song, is a letter, has formed something inside you. Information. Deformation. Reformation. Conformation. Transformation. Information. So there's a formation going inside your, be your being. Oh, be that's why I said be careful what you listen to. See, I, 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 I met somebody many years ago. And the person was, you know, playing around some kind of YouTube, learning how to kiss. I said, sister, are you dating? He said, no. Are you married? He said, no. He said, you know, but I need to learn to. So that my heart, I said, no, information, information, information. You'll be surprised that you think it's a cursory movie you are watching. For instance, the spirit of masturbation cannot thrive without images. Now, anybody who thrives in masturbation without images has sufficed enough pictures in their mind <laughs> to generate in the day of adversity or light out. <laughs> when there's light off, they have enough images. They don't need assistance. No external force. They have enough. What am I trying to tell you? Information. You think it's a normal movie you're watching, but it's from... Listen, guy, you're scared. Listen, listen, listen. Oh, and you You know, there was a guy who did um, hip-hop, what, what, what's his name? Craig, Craig Davis. Pastor Craig Davis. He, um, um, what was the name? Craig Lewis. Is it Craig Lewis? Yes. So he did this preaching truth about hip hop. Whoever was that clip before? Listen, it's true. Listen, it's. <laughs> Listen, it is true. That thing you call Hollywood. Recently, I was, I was on, yesterday or two days ago, I was sitting down in the hall and I began to watch Netflix. When I was watching the Netflix, eh, I could feel that I have lost desire for movies. I'm telling you. And it's not I'm trying information. Because of what I know now, everything they are doing in the movie, I can see the undertone. It's not, it's not for fun. Something's happening. Oh, yeah. The rituals that have happened. The people who have been slept with. Men and women. You are excited. Because you don't understand what's going on, I'm telling you. Some of you go on Instagram. They are hypnotists on Instagram. Do you know that? They have, and they use vibrations and frequencies. You think you are watching something, but they have vibrations and frequencies. And that's why they also understand from the occultic realm that in technology, seeing and hearing can model a, a, a generation. So they tell you that when you are installing Instagram, allow speaker, allow microphone. It is speaking the things you talk in excesses and carnality. So that once you are sitting somewhere, if you go and mention, oh, a girl was shaking her buttocks, buttocks dances will come. And you don't know where it came from. You're like, what is going on here? It's as if Satan is reading your mind. They understand seeing and hearing the doctrine of information. Can I tell you something? Do you think COVID was for fun? I told you this COVID thing will come back. Did I tell you? I said lockdowns are coming. I told you. Now in Ghana, they say when you enter Ghana, you have to do COVID tests. <laughs> oh, <laughs> you, yeah, you've not seen anything yet. When we tell you the things we are telling you, please don't joke. The thing is that your judgment will be different because prophet told you. I told you COVID is coming back. I told you I see lockdowns. 2022, one of the online's I declared, I see lockdowns coming back to the world. Let us watch it. I just saw it yesterday or two days ago on somebody's status from January 1st or 2nd. As soon as you land in Ghana, you are going to test post negative. They will do COVID tests after your vaccination card. Wow. They will still do COVID tests. Now, dear, I can't want it. You think the world is not coming to an end? 
<laughs> Let me preach on waiting on God. And my spirit is <laughs> it's stirred up, it's stirred up, it's stirred up. There's evil in this world. Listen, there's evil. There's evil. There's evil. One of the people you shouldn't trust is media. No, please, look, media is, a, is, a, is the plural Latin word for medium. A psychic medium. It's medium means it's just a tool. So media is not just for entertainment. It's doing something to you. It has reduced your prayer force. It has reduced your Bibles. Do you know now you can't watch a message for more than 30 minutes at a stretch? Your attention span has been affected. When was the last time you sat down two hours non-stop on a service? You can't. And you're rather saying the service is long. Yet you can watch a three-hour indie movie where they are doing nothing but hookah, 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 and they are dancing, and you are happy. Ah, film here, nice, Indian film. Nacho, 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 and you are happy. All for those people, I think when we get to heaven, we have to understand them. I'll tell Jesus, I'll stand at the entrance. When the Indians are coming, I need to understand them. They are come to kill you. And the person is on the floor. They have lifted the song. I mean, no, you, no, no. Bruh, die, die. We don't need the song. It is in death, those things. Then the window. I don't know which fan they use. The window start blowing. Ooh. Then he's lying there. Then the hair will be moving in the air. And the head will still be singing. And you are happy. Three hours of your day has gone. Bao Bali one, Bao Bali two, Bao Bali three. You watch all. Nine hours of your life. Hmm. Hmm. Let me preach my message. Eh? Let me preach my message. Why did I say what I said? Listen. 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 If you don't learn how to spend time with the Holy Spirit... The Bible says in the book of James, chapter 4, he said, draw nigh to God and he'll draw nigh to you. Then he also says something very powerful. Now, in that description of intimacy, he was just trying to tell you there's a kind of trade by butter. Meaning that the first and foremost way to advance in the spirit is time. How much time you give anything will determine what you become. Time. So if... And, and, and the Bible also says something very powerful. Acts 1, verse 5 and 5 to 8. Now, prior to that, in Psalms 8, he says, Thou hast made all things and put it in Adam's dominion. So Adam was in charge of time. He said, you have put all things under his feet. So Adam was in charge of time. Please, don't get it wrong. Adam was not controlled by the sun or moon. Adam controlled them. They were under his control. How do I know that? If Joshua could stop the sun, what could Adam do? That's Joshua. Joshua says, stand, stand still, and it obeyed. Is it Adam who couldn't say, stand, don't come today, come tomorrow, moon, wait? Yeah, Adam knew those things. He could stop the sun. Michael 4, 8 calls it the first dominion. The first dominion. There was a dominion that Adam had at first, before he lost it. Oh, tower of the flock. Migdal Adar. He said, he shall return unto you the first dominion. Go there, Micah 4, 8. Micah 4, 8. There's something called the first dominion. So there's a dominion Adam had before he fell. And that first dominion, Adam could control the sun, the moon, the stars. But the Bible says that not all things, according to Hebrews chapter 2, the verse number 7 and 8, he said, but we see not all things under him, but we see Jesus. Okay, so in the redemption, he said, but we see. He said, thou hast crowned him glory and honor, and thou set him over all the works of thy hands. Verse 8, but we see that not all things, uh-huh. You put all things on his side, uh-huh, uh-huh, next, 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 next. Not yet all things, but we see Jesus. So what he was trying to tell you is this, that Adam lost the dominion, and the sun, moon began to, that's why time began to take. Time was under Adam's control. That's why he didn't age. It was when he fell, 930 years was from the day Adam fell. Not from the day he was created. Oh, come on. Don't do that. <laughs> Don't be shocked. I mean, think about it. Have you talked about it like that? Yeah. When Adam was with God, there was no... Because, in fact, when Adam was created, read the Bible well, and Adam was created. Sixth day in the evening, Adam appeared. That was the sixth day, evening in the morning. 
Then Genesis 2 says, on the seventh day, God rested. There was no evening and morning. That means that in the Sabbath, there was no sunset. The evening and morning began again when Adam sinned. Then his years was being counted. So 930 years was after Adam's fall. After he fell, now he became... So after the fall, Adam lived 930 years before he finally died. Because actually when God said in dying, you die, that was the beginning of birthday. Hallelujah. That was the beginning of his birthday. Then he began to count it. One year, two years, three years. Because can I ask you a question? Can I ask you a question truly? Was Adam born? When he appeared, who was he? He was a man. So how did they count 930 years if he was not born? So when Adam was one year, that one year celebration was one year in the fall. That's why I advise Christians, please go and find the day you got born again. That is your real birthday. <coughs> because that birthday they gave to birth to you, 1972, 87, 93, is your death date. Oh! <laughs> no, you have to count your days. And to help you, God willing, on, is it, when is it, th- uh, Wednesday, 11th? 11th is Wednesday. On 11th, I'll be 26 years as a Christian. 26 years. <laughs> no, yeah, I'm saying nine, 11 January 1997. I wrote that date in my diary. I remember it. Like, I remember it. it was, that was when we were playing South Africa. There was a World uh, uh, um, Cup of Nations around that time. Those days we used to play Cup of Nations in January. I remember events, circumstances. I remember Starlet's night. I remember 97. I remember. Somebody saw you to listen to what I'm saying. They're asking, so how would they see? Is it your problem? <laughs> you are not doing mass in your head. How would this prophet, if he's 26 years in the Lord, mm, <laughs> don't, don't get lost. Listen to what I'm preaching. <laughs> Hallelujah. What am I trying to tell you? That is your real birthday. And when you begin to count those days, I'll get to that when we talk about retreats and waiting on the Lord. How to evaluate. When you evaluate, you go like, I've been three years as a Christian. Can I really say I've followed God for three years or I've done it two and a half? You should. I'm coming. Are we together? (laughs) Oh, today by the grace of God, for two weeks, this word will ring in your spirit. Before I see you again, you'll be fine. I know that you'll be fine. So time is important. Give time to the spirit. Every time you sow time to the Holy Ghost, you reap time. In Acts 5, verse, Acts, Acts, Acts 1, verse 5 to 8, the Bible now said that what? Acts 1, 5 to 8. Let's go there. Now, truly, John baptized with water and shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not made this. Yes. Next, next, next. Verse 6. It said, When therefore thou come together, and when they had come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore unto us the kingdom of Israel? Next. 7. He says, he said unto them, now listen to this English construction to help you a lot. He said, it is not for you to know the times and of the season, which the Father has kept in his own power. Now, if you understand the operations and modalities of interject- interjections, you will know what verse 8 now says. But, so the fact that he used an interjection means that the power he's talking about is the location where times and seasons are stored. That means that anybody who makes time for the Holy Ghost, Psalm 84 verse 10 will happen in your life. You redeem 1,000 days. 1,000 days. Two years, eight months, three weeks. Seven, um, six days or so, yeah. He says, a day in my courts is better than a 1,000 elsewhere. Give time to the Holy Spirit. You birth times and seasons. Give time to the Holy Spirit. You what? Birth times and seasons. Today, after this message, everything that has slowed you down in manifesting destiny will be taken away in Jesus' name. It, no, it has to be taken away. Some of you don't need to be 40 before you retire. 28, you should retire. You know why? Because God is going to give you a software, a prototype, a patent that when you put out on the market, the royalties that will come to you will make you not work by the time you are 40. 
Like you will literally retire. Like, yeah, you retire. Enjoy your life. Do you know what I'll, I'll say to you as, a, as a, an astute business counsel? Don't use time to buy money. Use money to buy time. Who's one tears here? Who's one tears here? I'll explain it. Don't use time to get money. Use money to rather get time. I repeat it again before it enters some people's head. You will achieve version of what I said. Because if I don't say it in a chi way, I'm going to ask you. But you let me go back again. Don't use time to get money. Rather use money to buy time. Now, this thing I learned when I was doing national service. I told you of that story. I was working a job 8 to 5. In fact, my job was 8 to 6. And Saturday was 8 to 4. Yes. And microfinance. They do a lot of remittances, so I don't have time to. I have to even stay after assist to clear remittance and clear pay. So I go around 7.38, and I'm a national service person. Then I saw uh, that time Pastor G was at Kolebu, and I was at the microfinance, and we were in the same class in, in, in university. So I was like, I called him, supposed to be, he was at Kolebu Medical School. I was like, ah, what time do you close? Oh, close like two, three. I said, ah, how much do they pay you? 138.71 pesos. It's the same thing I'm collecting. If I want three, two, sorry. 0.71 pesos. And the microphone has been the same thing. That's, uh, there's no overtime. I look at the thing and say, no, 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 no. Mm -mm -mm. 132.71. Four, four to five hours extra time. 132.71. No time. No, I say this to my shame. One day I woke up, I didn't bath, I went to work. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, like, oh. You see, the way everybody's not laughing well, they have done some before. They are corporates. Suspects, plenty over here. Because you woke up, you said, Jesus. You just use water on your face. Say, hey, hey, hey. What do you do if you have a In your mind, there's AC in the office. <laughs> That's the day I realized it's a bad business. Because you didn't bath, your sweat pores are blocked. So the biology behind it is that you are sweating in the AC because your, your, your pores are clogged. <laughs> hey, no, the day that thing happened, I, I advised myself. I said, this thing, I won't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> I said, this thing, I'll never do You know why? I said, no, 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 no. It can't be like this. Then I came to the analysis. No, listen, I think that God should grant this generation a soup supernatural blessing of analysis that gives productivity. Because many people are unfortunately sheepishly repeating things, thinking the outcome will change. No, there are some things when you do one, two, three, sit back and say, why is it not working? And do the mass. Then quickly change route. Otherwise, in the spirit and in the philosophical scientific world, you look foolish because you are repeating the same exercise, expecting a different outcome. It doesn't work like that. I look at them and I say, no, 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 no. Better I have time. So long ago, I understood the value of time. What I'm trying to tell you is this. There are more things to life than making money. Let me give you example one. There's a season in your life. If you don't use money to buy time, the day you mature and you are elderly and you need your children to visit you, they will also tell you they are busy working so they can't see you. Because every day you wake up in the morning, your children are asleep. By the time you come back from work, they've come to sleep without your input. It means their developmental stage, you were not there. Now, when they become teenagers and say, don't do that, don't do this, they can tell you their mind because you were not there when they were growing up. So you have to learn how to use money to buy time. Because you want to run a family and be a successful parent, you have to learn how to work early and produce results that will give you money. So that in the days to come, you are your own boss. Because of your child, you can drop your child after school, go and pick your child, converse with them, bring them to your office and have fellowship with them. So that by the time they are sleeping, we went to mommy at the office. We were working with mommy and they grew up with mommy. But if you are chasing money, like you have time, so you are using it to get money, you will never be rich. That's what the rich do. They use money to buy time. So when whilst you are in the office sweating, your CEO is on a yacht in Dubai. He has used money to buy time. So they use time for the other 
aspects of life. Because as long as you are chasing money, you, if you are not careful, you can't build it. You need some time to relax and see opportunities. You need time to mingle with the rich, to hear the business deals available. Also, time you need. Time you need. It's not press where you meet the rich. Because you see, there's a place when they meet you, they know you are a staff. They will never talk to you. Be wise. So that thing you want to always be there, teachers, pay. they know that's your boss. So they don't even take you seriously. But when they meet you in a different situation, you are in church, you are wearing your suit, and you are looking, ah, what do you do? I'm, I'm, ah, hey, what do you do there? Oh, I'm a, ah, I, I, you look like a manager. What are you? He's seen you in a different environment. And when you see a guy come, hey, yes, please, yes, please. I'm not saying don't be humble. But stop chasing with desperation because the moment the person says, I want to give you a job, you look too desperate. They will tell you what they want to tell you. Oh, may the Holy Ghost give us wisdom this year. Plenty. Plenty. We need it. I realized that I have to operate in that grace. Yeah, recently I was talking to one of my mentors, Prophet Nana. He said, he said Adam, you, he, said, he, said, he said, God has given you wisdom. So you are a man of wisdom. So. I'm giving you an advice, so just pray about it. That's what he tells me. He says, oh, you're a man of wisdom, so I just think about it and see what you want to do about that. Yeah. That's when you are, it dawned on me like, hey, eh, I operate in wisdom. Oh, yeah. Not sometimes you are doing something like it's a natural, I like just give you advice naturally, but you don't know that it's the wisdom of God. Yeah. There's a lady I tried to date. She didn't mind me. Yeah. When she heard I was dating, she said, ah, um, Adam, can you tell your beloved that if there's anything she will not take serious in your life, she didn't joke with your advice. Yeah. She said, yes. Even those times I was dating, huh? you, when you are dating, let me not even know. <laughs> so, 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 baby, I'm a person. What do you say? What do you say? Too full. Yeah, mom pie. Let's go. No. So, can anybody who once dated tell you that you made me closer to God? Baby, you'll be fastidious tissue. One son, we say, Aden, Aden, somebody's daughter. Not one son, we say, let's go and pray. Let's go and fast. <laughs> Can somebody's daughter say, you have made me, I've learned from your giving, I've learned from your prayer life, I've learned from your comportment. I can honor God that you, you, are, you are not, you don't know. Somebody must. <laughs> hey, fastidious bacteria nah. fastidious <laughs> let me preach my message so the Holy Spirit has the power of times and seasons the moment you spend time with him you will buy time hear me again the moment you spend time with the Holy Ghost you will buy time no time spent with God is wasted please don't be deceived that when you are spending time in retreat you look the Bible said that when you fast, when you pray, He said you fast and pray in secret, but God rewards you openly. When you see somebody buying car, marrying, things are working, it is secret things they've done that is being exposed. It's the same way when somebody is being judged, it is secret things they did that is being exposed. So no fasting will go unrewarded. There's all the fasting we have done. We are going to fast from Tuesday. We'll start at midnight tomorrow. We are fasting. Hey, ah. Hey. If I don't fast with you in two weeks' time, we'll be a parachute. Do you know parachute? You'll be floating. You have overeating. We are fasting tomorrow. Eh? So, no, I mean, so tomorrow is 9th, right? So, 12 midnight. You get a reason. So tomorrow you can eat. The moment it's 11 59, the last thing must be chewed. <laughs> By 12, we start fasting. We we'll fast 12, uh, 10th, 11th, 12th. And it's fruit fast. Mm -hmm. It's fruit fast. Unless you have medical reason, you can eat fruit in the day. But I advise you break with fruit. This, that's why it's only three days. Break with fruit. Break, break with fruit. So you'll be light. Your body has eaten too much. <laughs> Someone said no. Yes, that's eating too much. <laughs> let let. <laughs> I've told you. Unless you have a medical reason, listen. Unless you have a medical reason, and please don't concoct one for yourself. 
Somebody use fasting to cure ulcer. Don't use fasting to collect one for yourself. No, I'm serious. Please, please, please hear it very well. So, you are fasting tomorrow. Yes, fruit fast. I, I, even fruit fast helps you, your, the girls, your skin will fall down nice. I bet top from bottom. Uh, uh, your skin will fall down, baby. Like that. Yeah, fine. Fruit fast. Mango, banana. And listen, if I say fruit fast, you can do fruit salad. This time, God told me you can do fruit salad, you can add milk. If you use the washroom hammer, it's up to you. <laughs> do what you want to do, but make sure it is fruit. Don't send me a text and say, should we use plantain? It's, it's, <laughs> use cassava. Don't, don't, don't provoke me at all. Pra, pra, plantain is a fruit. <laughs> Very well. <laughs> Sammy, I've said it all. It's up to you. Whatever you do. do. <laughs> Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Very, very important. Very, very important. It makes you buy back time. And when you buy back time, the reason you buy back time is this. You see, in the Greek, there's a word called kairos. Kairos is opportune moment. Kairos is um, spirit time. Kairos, but the strength thing about spirit time is, is the conglomeration of human time. I repeat again. Spirit time does not happen in absentia. It happens in the compending of human time. What I mean by that is, the Bible says in Psalm 89, the verse number 10, uh, verse 20, sorry, he said, I found my servant David, and with my holy oil I have anointed him. Now, the word found there in the, in the, in the Hebrew is the word matzah. Matzah means to attain. That means I have attained, or David has attained the recognition when I can find him. That means there were things David was doing, he didn't even recognize that it was part of his qualification for the anointing. What I mean by that is, for God to even find you worthy to lead a ministry, to, to be a CEO, to do all the things, the little things that are put in your hands, you have to train your spirit enough to be able to handle it. When we were um, 7th of March, we were at Pram Pram, and Reverend Eastwood was giving a, his sermon about um, seven years of Potter City. He made a statement. He said, God has broken prophet. The many things he has suffered, he left the ministry, the things he went through, character, assassination, the brokenness. That's why today, protest is what it is. That means that also, if he had failed in any time of his trial, he will not perhaps birth a city. So what you are looking for, a day you will shine, is based on the days it looks like you are not shining. It looks like you are disgraced. What you do in those times will matter in the day you shine. In fact, to qualify you for shining. He said, a light affliction is working for what? An eternal weight of glory. So if your affliction becomes too heavy, that stops you, you give up, you can't do it again, then in the day of glory, you are not qualified. So you see, it matters truly your daily routine. Your daily routine. You want to marry, date, marry, and every day you go and pray with your beloved. If you don't do it alone, you cannot do it to somebody. Can I tell you something? A supernatural marriage is based on a supernatural single life. You can't jump into a supernatural marriage like that. A praying marriage is a praying single life. And a praying single life means that you, without a beloved, you can fire four hours. Rakopa, rakopa. The day a beloved comes, you can level it to one hour. But if you don't do it at all, it's not a beloved that will make you pray. In fact, it will even make you tired to pray. Do you know the stories of women? Kadunimis. They can send you one text message. Your whole spirit is destroyed. You can't pray again. So a supernatural marriage is based on a supernatural single life. When you are alone now, are you praying? Are you studying the word? Are you giving? Are you listening to messages on faith? If you're not doing it, don't think when you start dating, you'll be spiritual. Who told you? We gamble too much of our destiny. Who told you? The heart of a man is desperately wicked. Who can know it? Jeremiah was saying that even my own, I don't know it. Say this year, I shall retreat. I say this year, 
I will spend more time with God. Amen. I said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Are we together then? Then why do we have to wait on God? Why do we have to wait on God? Isaiah chapter 40, verse 28. Why? Why do we have to wait on God? Why do we have to get to the next point? So please, make sure that you are, you are passing your test. Faithful in little things. Faithful in little things. Faithful in little things. One of the things I've learned about growth is that when a farmer plants a seed, you know what happens? He waters it. He'll mulch it. There's nothing growing. Isn't it? There's one crazy plant called the bamboo. It's about two or three years you will water, you will mulch. It will not even show you a single shoot by its under. And it's said that the moment the bamboo shoots up, in one year it can grow 80 feet. That means that two, three years it was not showing, it was growing. Also, that means that you see, the moment I say that it's not growing, so because of that I've stopped the exercises I have to do. I've stopped the assignments I have to do. In my mind, I'm just going to wait. After two years, it will grow. It won't grow. In the times where things are not nice, things are not convenient, things are painful. You hear me tell you a lot of stories, right? About my work, people I tried to date, all those things. Do you know what it means? If I pass those tests, God can use those stories to help people. That means that even the things you go through are stories for the ministry you do. That's why you can't fail it. Because in the day you fail, what story can God use to tell for anybody to be encouraged? So you have to be determined that in the times it's not nice, it's you have to drag it out, you have to beat it out of your system, you have to force yourself, you just have to move. Just got to move. If God told you that people will come and bow to your sheave and your star, it's a matter of time. But what do you do with that time? I can't be vengeful when they come. By the time they saw Joseph, listen to what they said. According to their level of growth, if it was them, they would kill their brother. But when they got to Joseph, Joseph cried and said, ah, in Genesis 50, how can I do such a thing to you? You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. That tells you that there was something that had characteristically changed in Joseph that made God find him worthy to be prime minister. Meaning, if Joseph was still vengeful, ready to kill his brothers, he will never ascend the throne. I advise you today, somebody broke your heart two years ago, you are wasting your time. Let it go. Develop. I told one of my sons recently, I told them that the best way to succeed is to, is the best way to get revenge is to succeed. Succeed to a point where whoever offended you, they cannot avoid your name. Anywhere they pass, that guy, that guy, and it will be irritating to their ears because there's nothing they can do. Maliko para Don't let somebody's nonsense weigh you down and destroy your life. Do you understand? Am I talking to somebody? Joseph becomes qualified for prime ministership because he has developed in nature. So by the time he's now sitting on the throne, he says, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. That posture is the reason why he's going far. Because the version of Joseph that will become prime minister can only be achieved by the selling into slavery and Potiphar's wife lying on him. And he being disappointed that Potiphar believed his wife over him and how he could be taught to be a womanizer. All those things he went through. And the battle forgot him. And the, all the things he went through. By the time he now ascends the throne, he even weeps when he sees his brothers. And you should see how she appreciated they were looking at him. He was weeping. So they were wondering, is it crocodile tears? Like, oh, 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 oh. And you know already, I set them up with cap. So he said, mm, Simeon, Levi, that's how they'll cry. We'll start crying. <laughs> no. Because when, now, when they now brought, the, they were happy that, oh, thank God, then they, I'm sure the day Job died. And that is the day you see the brothers praying that Jacob shouldn't die. Because they know if he dies, they are finished. Because the Bible says, as soon as Jacob died, Genesis 50, they went to Dave and Joseph. Please. 
We are sorry what we did to you. <laughs> to them, it is because of Joseph he has not punished them. It's because of Jacob. That tells you, this is why you have to succeed. Because the moment you succeed, the person has in their mind that, hey, the things I did to you, will you also do to me in this day of power? And your mind is not even there. And that's why the Bible says, do good to those who do you evil. Then you heap coals. That's how you heap coals. Coals of fire on what? Their head. It, will you put literal coal pot on their head? No. What it means is that you put a tormenting thought. That you are coming for them. Meanwhile, too, you are not part of my thoughts. I'm way past that level. I'm beyond that description. Why my mind is not? I'm not for what? Amen? Amen. 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 Are you here? Yeah. Waiting on the Lord. What to do when you're waiting on the Lord? Who has ever been on a retreat before? Lift your hands. Who has never been on a retreat before? Lift your hands. You've never gone on a retreat before. Don't be shy. We are learning. You've never been on a retreat before. I'm not talking of corporate. Oh. I'm not talking of church went on camp meeting. You were there. <laughs> no. You, you decided to go somewhere on your own to go and pray for two days, three days. Lift your hands. If you haven't done it before, lift your hands. Okay, so I have quite a number. I have to help you all. Amen. All right. Okay. Okay. Hallelujah. Are we there? Verse 28. Verse 28. What did I say? Let's read together. I want to go. Hallelujah. Now, what he's trying to tell you is this, that <laughs> next, next, you just, just go on. He gave a power to the faint. Now, notice what he also said in Luke chapter 18, verse 1, that man ought always to pray and not to faint. Now, that description was trying to say that in the creatures of God's creation, the monkey bellows, the horse neighs, the sheep bleats, uh, the donkey brace, and all those things. But in the long run, man prays. The moment man is not praying, he will fall short of his humanity. There will be some, that, that's why I told you the last time, some of your depressions is not Prozac. Some of your depression is not the absence of a car. That's why I give the example. You can be in America, you can be in London, you can have a marriage, you can be dating and you're still depressed. Depression sometimes is indication your spiritual life is under attack. Get your health in the spirit on track. Otherwise, anything you get physically, you'll be suspecting you'll lose it. Go back to verse 29, Isaiah 40. Kebalalalaba. What did I say now? Uh -huh. He gave a part to the faint, and to them that have no strength, he increased strength, verse 30. Now, the youth shall fail. Now, this is not a judgment. When he says, even the youth, he didn't say the youth that try. He said, even the youth. When he uses even, he's trying to tell you that there's an option for success. And the glory of a young man is a strength. So, youth there is speaking about even your natural strength. Even. What is natural to you that you are beautiful, you are handsome, you are intelligent, that natural strength. It can fail and it will fail. And be wary. Have you ever asked yourself why your intelligence is not taking you anyway? <laughs> like you are fine for nothing. <laughs> you are just fine. No production. Just fine. Do you understand? I met a couple of tall guys. And you know in Ghana, once you are tall, you play basketball. Some of the most shocking answers you get. They don't play basketball. They didn't do sports. They were just walking the school, Mr. Longo. <laughs> so even the youth, your natural strength will be to fail and faint. And he didn't even use we. He said, shall. It means whatever you do, whatever you find as natural strength, it to fail. That means that, that means that man's destiny can never be accomplished outside the enterprise of God's intervention. You cannot, look, you cannot fulfill a dream without God. Now, if you are fulfilling any dream that's outside God and looks like a dream, then it might be Satan's dream. But any God-given dream, somebody made a statement that blessed my heart so much. He said, anything God tells you to do that does not scare you probably was not from God. Sometimes when I see the things God has told me about Ephesus, I'm like, God, 
You know, have, 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 how, how many have seen my face when they are giving us prophecy? God will do every source this. God will raise us here. You see, I'm always serious. No, you never see me jump. Hey, man. Hey, no. I understand what it means. I have prayers to pray. I have fast consequences. There are consequences to the vision. You go and follow you again. Before I'll be speaking, and I'll be saying consequence because I've practiced it more than 21 times. Amen. Amen. So when they say, oh, I see God using you. God is taking you far. The nations are waiting for you. God is going to use Ephesus. I know it is travail. I know it is so. I'm never, I'm never, amen. Like, no. I see people who are excited about visions and they don't go far in life. Amen. It's not your excitement though. It's the, the labor dimension. Every prophetic word you are receiving, the labor you are receiving in it, that's what actually transforms your life. So when they say, I see greatness, prosperity, you should know that God has come to demand seed. Oh yeah, that's the mistake you do. God is going to give you wealth. You should know God is going to pull you. Kabinimitaya. <laughs> God is come to give you power. You think you sleep? <laughs> I thought that power was God, then you don't need prophecy. But the moment they tell you in prophecy, it means something's about to happen. Something's about to shift, and you need to labor. You have to stretch your imagination and your spirit. So the moment they say that Ephesus is going to be like an ironic priest to training, examination, I have to stretch. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it's not a negative pronouncement. It's speaking about what is common to humanity. That by all means, humanity will fail. By all means, your natural strength will fail. It's not capable of accessing what you want to do. Do you know sometimes your beauty or your connection can put you in a company, but it cannot promote you? So the thing got you a job, but you are not promoted. That tells you your, your youthfulness is fainting. It's failing. It can give you a contract, but who will give you the financing? You know, your vim, your, you know, your bravado, you went to talk. He, uh, someone told me when I'm preaching, I'm using words. Go and Google it and learn English. What I say? Bravado. bravado. Vimtious. So the moment you show up like that, you understand. And you are like, oh, you know how to talk. You convince the people they want to invest in your company. Powerful. The next phase is pre-financing. <laughs> Who will give you $1 million? So you see that? You have that that's why a lot of people get frustrated. It's like they say, God cry. It's not God, though. You went with youth. You went with what you know. You went with what you can do. And you got to the contract, but you didn't go with God. So the rest of it, you have to now find how to handle it. <laughs> oh, you know why I'm laughing? So I was talking to my pastor brother, and he had put on his status. How can you be online as a man and be thirsting after a lady online? Like the lady is pretty, she's beautiful, and is moving you. And he said, that's not love. Because you have not encountered math order, <laughs> armpit order, bad character, bad English. Do you understand? Yeah. So online, dear, it can be nice with the filters and the pimple removers. Hey. But when you meet the person, so this is not what you settle for. It's not at all. <laughs> you thought you have seen American goods. <laughs> it's China. <laughs> Praise the Lord. As long as you're in the flesh, wear and tear will happen. There will be wear and tear in your emotions. Wear and tear in your finances. Wear and tear in your spirit. There's wear and tear. As long as you're in the flesh, there's wear and tear. That's why he said that they that wait. 31. But they that wait. They that wait. Now, now, now listen, listen, listen. But they that wait. But they. Interjection again. And he mentioned some people. Means not everybody will come for this. So as I'm preaching right now about retreat here, you know some people go and lie in their house, watch Netflix for two weeks, chill, relax, and say, oh, but is it every day we'll fast? <laughs> please, those in America, please fast. You are watching me? Fast. I repeat again, fast. We hear and they're fasting. But they that wait, it means not everybody wait. 
That's why it's not everybody who becomes great. Because not everybody wants to go through this painful thing. Your outward man is perishing. Your shoes are becoming small. Your chest is looking bigger than you. It's not nice. They that wait. They that wait. They that wait. If you are a Christian, get one powerful bespoke tailor. Because here, there, there, you fluctuate. You'll be doing wuja, wuja, wuja. You'll just be reducing and increasing. Take it like that. That's the life of a Christian. You are a soldier. Today you'll be big, tomorrow you'll be small. It's life. It's part of the work. Don't say your dress is poor. It is part. Your outward man must perish, including your outward clothes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Did I wait? Did I wait? So I said, man's habitat is God's presence. Now, God's presence is not God's power. Thank God, Dr. George brought us perspective. Now, the presence of God is not felt. It's known. It's the power of God that is felt. Number two, the presence of God brings revelation. The power of God brings manifestation. So when you see people falling down, breaking chests, that is the power of God, not his presence. Of course, when he comes in his presence, his power follows him. But there are other times his power comes without him. Because there was an earthquake, there was fire, and God was not in it. Remember? Number three, the power of God changes circumstances. The presence of God changes your heart. That's why you can go to some ministries, many things are happening, testimonies, miracles, but the people are as carnal as the devil. I'm telling you, like you'll be shocked, but biting, angry, because it's the power of God that's available. Honestly, when I came to this, discover this truth, I became very temperate with how I release both. Because I noticed that the church of God has been trained to enjoy the power, not the presence. Because the presence works on your heart. I'm telling you, it's, it's in the presence of God you can really do true repentance. I'm a man of unclean lips. I'm undone. When you see God, something will fall on you that, she, you are, you are doing some wrong things. Stop it. That means as long as you're not repenting, it probably was the power. It was not in the presence. Psalm 103 verse 7. The presence of God shows you the ways of God. Psalm 103 verse 7. The presence of God shows you the ways of God. But the power of God shows you the acts of God. This is the difference between Moses and Israel. The last two. The presence of God changes your character. It affects your character. But the power of God touches or expresses your gifts. So when you see people gifted, it does not mean God is there. They are just using God's power. That's some of the most gifted people have character problems. Very gifted, very anointed. They can see, they can prophesy. But man, those guys can lie. They're thieves. They like your money. Deceptions and all those kind of stuff. Yeah. Finally, the presence of God reveals who God is. The power of God shows you what God has. So the power of God shows you God's possessions. The presence of God shows you God's person. That's why anytime God's presence is there, you know it. You see, that, that convoluted expression, sometimes it's between, you are switching between presence and power, presence and power. But there's a dimension where you enter the presence, your soul is stilled. But when you enter the power, your soul is dead. So in the presence of God, everybody becomes quiet. The room is like dead silent. You can hear a pin drop. Everybody's quiet. God is here. So sometimes when we say God is here, it's not when people are falling down. We know when he has come. Everybody is stiff. You know what he does? Light bulb moments. He begins to put on light in your head. Remember that story. Seven years ago. Two years ago. It's like, whilst I'm preaching, you are on a journey. You are seeing things that are, ah, these are the reasons I'm here. That's the presence of God. But the power of God, ah, staring you up. You see people, ah, 
And sometimes many of the people, it's not because there's a demon in them. It's a resistance in their soul. They don't want to receive God. So their power is hitting their resistance. So you see them jacking and vibrating. It's not witchcraft. Eh? Be in chill. What is here? Ghanaians like that. When people, so people don't like to fall down. It, like, it looks ridiculous. Like, so you see, when you're praying for people, receive the power of the Holy Spirit. Like, <laughs> and some people just come. When, <laughs> when you're praying for that's where they are kimbo. They'll fold their hand. <laughs> well, you close yourself. God is a gentle spirit. I cannot force the anointing on you if you're closed. Do you understand? I can't force it. I can't force it. In the New Testament, we can't force things on you. I told you. So if you don't get willing to open up, I can't force it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we here? I'm showing you all these things so that when you go for a retreat, you know what you're going to encounter. Hallelujah. You're not just going, hey, no, no, no. You know what you're going to do. It's very specific, very direct. You know what you're doing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, of course, I've told you what the presence of God is. is your habitat. Your protection is in the presence of God. Proverbs, Job chapter 28, verse 7. See what he said. So, um, Psalm 91. He that dwells in the secret place of Most High shall abide in the shadow of the Almighty shall say of the Lord. See what? There's no power where no foul. There's a power where no foul knoweth which the vultures I have not seen. Next verse, verse 8. The lions whelp. Now, the vulture, the foul evil spirit, the vultures are demons. The lions whelp are fallen angels. And the fierce lion, of course. Remember, the devil is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. So, the roaring lion is also the description in the book of Job as the fierce lion. Now, that's the devil. He says there's a place in God the devils have not known. They can't find you on their radar. When they call your name in the mirror, you don't appear because you are a presence of God practitioner. He said, thousand shall fall on thy left side, ten thousand on right hand. With your eyes shall you behold the reward of the wicked. Why? Because thou hast made the Lord thy God thy habitation. So Psalm 91 is a, pro, is a procurement on the place of intimacy in his presence. If you are not in his presence, you will be part of the thousand that falls on the left. <laughs> Until he is your habitation. That's what Psalm 91 says. Oh, please, let me go. I think verse 7. Huh? Verse 7, Psalm 91. Verse 7. Uh huh, uh huh. Next, 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 verse 8. Verse 8, verse 9. What did he say? Because. So, everything you've seen from verse 1 to verse 9. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and your habitation. A thousand four hundred left, ten thousand. No evil shall come near the place of your dwelling. So, there's benefits to intimacy and waiting on God. The presence of God is your protection. If the devil comes fighting you, he meets God. Number two, it's your provision. It's a provision. God feeds you with his presence. Exodus 16, the Bible says in verse 12 and 13, that when the glory of God had departed, the Bible says they now looked and saw the manna. So God's glory brought manna to them. And of course, it had to be a mechanism by glory because it was by glory, you know, the Bible says that when you take more than enough, worms will enter into it and it stinks. On the Sabbath day, there is no manna. So the Bible says in Exodus 16, they went out to gather manna, but they didn't find any. And on the sixth day, God allowed them to gather twice as much. So it's only on the sixth day you can take more than you need and there will be no worms. It, it, it has to be a technology beyond human operation. God's glory was bringing it. So the dew will bring it glory. Then when it goes. So that's how it was. Amen. Amen. The presence of God is a place of revelation. Psalms 25, 14. The secret things belong to them that fear. And he'll show his covenant. Psalm 24, 25, sorry, verse 15, 14. Psalm 25, verse 14. Oh, 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 oh. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Aye, aye, All right. Now, so when you check the presence of God, you just get in his provision, protection, the path of life. Life is his presence. Life is in his presence. You can't do life outside God's presence. Life is his presence. Now, let me explain something to you about life. See, when the Bible talks about death, death is not the cessation of existence. Let me repeat it. Death is not what? So, when we talk about life, life is the power to live. But in the power to live, there are two exponents to it. Number one, to have a life form and to have a life essence. Now, life form means that because I'm human, I need a head, you know, hands, legs, 
This is the life form of a human. The dog has a life form, the bird has a life form, the fish has a life form. But the essence of the bird is the ability to fly because of what God put into it. The essence of man is to think, intelligently interact with things, and to enunciate words, to explain yourself and communicate to people. So what is happening is this, that the moment I have life essence, what makes me human is present. What makes me look human is my form, but it is the power of life that makes me express these two. Otherwise, the valley of dry bones, Ezekiel 37. The Bible says there was a bone, the valley full of dry bones. The bones came together. It was a great mummy, right? But they were not alive. They had a form, but they were not alive. And God formed Adam from the clay of the earth. So the form is your, your appearance. But what makes you move is the essence. But that essence, according to Ezekiel 37, was motioned by winds. And that wind was the power of God that came over them and they became living. What I'm trying to say is, is that in the same respect, when we say life, God has a life form and a life essence. And it is the power of the life of God that guarantees you correct living. In other words, in the human life form, you need to be taught to know. In the life form of God or the life essence of God, you fellowship to know. So God does not teach Adam what to name the creatures. God downloads it into Adam by proximity. It's like airdrop. You ever wondered how you know certain things? That's why some people foolishly say they were once a mountain. Because every time they dream, they are at a certain mountain in a certain place, and they don't know their place, but they know that place. So it's like, ah, why is that this mountain? So they now foolishly say that they were once a mountain or a tree. In our order. <laughs> Please forgive me. I don't know why I said order, but I just said order. Amen. Because to them, there are images in their mentality or their spirit man that looks like I've been here before. Can I tell you something? You were created at the time Adam was created. So there are, there are, there are documentations in God you came from heaven with. The more you unravel your Godhood, you will know things before you know. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. It's already there. I remember when I became a Christian, I was quoting scriptures I'd never read before. It was when I read the Bible, I realized, that, ah, it's in the Bible. And I, I, I didn't know it was in the Bible. I just knew that this is a scripture. That's how God works. So that is what we talk about life. That is why the Bible said now in Job 18 verse 13, quickly, oh, there are so many things to download. Thank God. You're going to listen to this message a lot. You're going to come your way. The prayer guys will come. We'll be fasting. Yeah, I need to give you information. So forgive me if I'm giving you a lot of things today. Let's read together. I want to go. Uh-huh. Next. Even the first of them shall devote his strength. Next to verse, verse 14. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tobacco. Yes. Bring of the king of terrors. Now, you notice that he's mentioned different things. Loss of confidence. That's low self-esteem. The next one is the king of terrors is fear. But he starts with one particular thing that characterizes the firstborn of death. Weakness. And he says, weakness will take away your strength. What is that strength? By strength shall no man prevail. Listen to what I'm going to say. What that means is this. What you call weakness is not how God calls weakness, weakness. The Bible says in Romans 8 that God could not do certain things because of the weakness that was in the flesh. What was that weakness? It's not sin. It's not temptation. The weakness in the flesh meant there was a kind of life that could support existence, but the flesh didn't have the capacity to express that life. That's what scripture calls weakness. So when you say you are weak, that weakness, according to God's description, is not weakness as in a sin. It's a weakness as in an inability. What Paul calls a limitation in your flesh that prevents results. So when you say, this is my weakness, it's actually the absence of a strength to live in the scope of God. So anytime you say, I'm weak, I'll show you. God's life is anti-sin. When sin tempts you, it is a weakness in the expression of the life of God that made sin savory. Because if the life is alive, 
First John 5 says, verse 16, if you see your brother sin and sin, that does not lead to death. Pray that you receive what? Go there, go there. Pray that you receive what? Huh? Ask that you shall what? Receive why would you ask for his life? And he's talking about sin. Because he's saying the life is the power that overrides the weakness that is making you tempted. That means the more the life, the less temptation. So everybody here can be tempted. Don't be deceived. Is that a problem? You're operating at a certain ebb or the absence of opportunity. That's why you think you can be tempted. Sometimes the ebb is low. You can say, what's not seen? Every girl passes, you see a shape. You are in the office, you are like, Charlie, hmm, should I bet? Should I bet? <laughs> Charlie, this Manchester match, Charlie, I feel better. I feel better. So, the moment the temptation, look, I'm trying a very simple thing in life. If you go and study the laws of life, you understand what I'm saying. Remember, the moment you have the thought that, can I bet? That means there's a violation of strength. That's why you could even think it. This is why I say that God didn't intend that you try to suppress pain. Or somebody insulted you or you are bitter about something and you need forgiveness. God designed your spirit to be sad that somebody will lie about you and you didn't even feel it. To even correct it. This is the reason why I'm telling you that. The moment you feel annoyed, frustrated, anxious, angered by what somebody said, the life force has come low. Because when it's high, sir, they can insult you. But well, you did not feel it. That's what he said, the drunk man. I was beaten, but I did not feel it. I was struck, but I did not feel it. I will rise up again and seek it yet again. Mm. Somebody getting it? Are you sure you're getting it? Yeah. So when you say, Guide me, oh, thy great Jehovah, lead me through this paradise. I am weak. Thou art mighty, hold be with thy powerful hand. That weakness he's talking about in this original definition is that there is a limitation that has given you an ought for you not to express God's full power and life. That's what we call weakness. That's what Romans 8 says the flesh was weak to carry out God's agenda. Not He's not talking of the first had son. It was weak. It didn't have the energy and ability to control the life God has given you all this while. See, there are things in the Bible. Now, let me start this way. Number one, um, in, in going for a retreat or having time with the Lord, And something I want to say to help somebody here. Um, please, every ministry you go to, make sure you are led. If you're also here with us and something brought you here, you are being fed, please pray. Because when you pray, what will happen is that Judas syndrome will be dealt with. So we do you know the Judas syndrome? Jesus has stopped doing miracles. So we need to set him up so we can get something from him. Apparently, all the time Jesus was doing miracles, Judas was charging. He was making merchandise from Jesus' ministry. Yes. So that's how come when Jesus stopped it, he had to set Jesus up to part up the pairs. Now listen to what I'm saying very well. When I say pray about it, it means that there might be something that probably attracted you to Ephesus. Made you feel like, oh, I want to join. These people are teaching some things I would like to learn. But when you come, because it's training, or you probably saw my YouTube message and you said you want to come to Ephesus. But when you came here, you realized that I'm talking simple, I'm repeating myself, we are having a nice time, and I'm totally different from the person who visits another ministry. The reason is because if you are ever led to a person by revelation, every time you hear the person, you are confirming that God really sent me here. The moment you begin to go, like, why am I even here? That means perhaps you came for a moment, or you're a client, not a disciple. <laughs> Yeah, you came for something to be solved. When you are done, you are gone. Do you understand? And because we are also dealing with men, don't show up in the ministry consistently, a pastor. Then your mind is not, you are not supposed to be there. Then the man now puts you on his group page. <laughs> and you don't know how to say no. Then he's increasing you, oh, do this for me, oh, yes, please, yes, please. Then the day you say, so you are not really, you do what you have done, you have provoked something. So be wise. This is why I tell people that know from start. Number two, so that you don't also suffer the fear of missing out. You are not in three ministry groups. 
Then when they are doing this, hey, Charlie, so no, you, you sort yourself out by revelation. Then you know where you are. Because Isaiah 61 says, the planting of the Lord. Please, I'm repeating myself again. Now, please, no pun intended. I beg you. Sometimes make it easier for us to correct you. No, that's why we are in your life, to correct you. Am, am I speaking the truth? Oh, yeah. To correct you. So that you can go far. You can go far. I know some of you have your churches you go to before you come to Ephesus. Powerful. Then we know that's what we are engaging at because that's your revelation. But make sure that at every junction, especially of interfering with any ministry, there's revelation behind it. So you know the extent you can go. Otherwise, they'll pull you into something and you're like, eh, and you don't know how to say it. <laughs> and number three, when the angel of Ephesus is releasing blessings, he doesn't see you in the list. No, that's how serious it is. No, I told you one. When we get to heaven, eh, every member God gave us will be written in a book. So you can't be outside the list. No, please, I'm not. If you are here for the first time, I'm not scaring you to join us. But we are even going on a break. <laughs> <laughs> so next week, we are not meeting. Wherever you want to go, go. I'm just saying that make sure. Huh? Because the moment it comes by revelation, something happens to you. You give your whole to the thing. And the thing, you will say, God will use that place to wash you well. And in a short time, pa, 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 you are climbing. And people don't understand why. So please, just, I, I just needed to share this with you so that you get grounded. Yes, I'm going to say, your eyes is three visions. You are looking here, you are looking here, you are looking here. A three-eyed creature. It's a monster. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Tell your neighbor, focus. That brings me to my first point. No retreat can be done without focus. That means that you cannot go to a retreat saying, I'm just retreating. I've just come to the presence of God. It can't happen like that. Do you understand? Are we here? You can't just come and say, I've come. Now, any retreat without focus will end up phone, movie, or you'll just be there. You'll be lying in the bed. <laughs> they one. And the moment there's no focus in the retreat, hunger is high. The hunger, you feel it fast. So that's now you're cool. You're not focused. I said, what? I'm not focused. So when you're going for a retreat, have a focus. What does it mean? I'm going to see God concerning A, B, C. I'm going to see God concerning this issue. I'm going to see God concerning this matter. Because if I go in that regard, I am certain that because of the focus, who for the joy that was set before me, I what? Endure the shame of what? The cross. Forget the boys. Huh? This is the time to focus. Eh? This is how the Lord tries your faith. The trial of your faith. As I'm talking of focus, they are also displaying. Amen. Focus. Amen. So the moment you have a focus, it changes everything. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, too, what does it say? Aha. Who for, he said, the endure, there was something ahead of Jesus Christ. That's how come he went through. The moment you have a goal, God has to speak to me concerning my marriage. God has to speak to me concerning my business. God has to speak to me concerning my ministry. The moment these things are set, um, settled, what happens is that no matter how much you are struggling in the retreat, you have not gotten your answer. So you can persist. You can what? Persist. I'll show you something very interesting about the brain, and I'm getting there. Very, very interesting. Very, very interesting. So say focus. focus. Never go to a retreat without focus. If you are going to a retreat, you are tired, you are planned to add a day just to sleep. That means the day, the first day you get there, you know you are tired, you are coming from work. Don't do like you are reading the Bible. You will deceive yourself. Just lie down. I lay me down. I lay me down at my mama. There's no help for him in the Lord. Thou, oh Lord, are the shield for me. You are the glory lift up by hand. So when you get there, just go and lay down and play some worship and just continue. That day you can watch a Christian movie. Christian. But know your weakness. Some of you, oh, movie is your problem. Retreat is not a time to catch up with series. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, nah. Hey, I saw a buff way suddenly. Oh, she film. Berma, Berma, you are watching film. When the angels of the Lord have come to minister. I mean, come on. 
So make sure you are focused. And can I repeat it again? Never, ever, listen, when you are tired, don't try God. <laughs> Sorry. Do you understand why? Anytime you are tired, rest. Spiritual rest is confluence from spirit, physical rest. If you don't physically rest, there will be a problem with your spiritual rest. Some of the greatest errors you've made is because you were tired. You were tired, you spoke anyhow. You were, so when you are tired, you get agitated easily. You, you, you that's just like that. So you're tired. So you just talk anyhow. Esau sold his birthright because of tiredness. He said, I'm weary. Give me beans. You say, birthright. <laughs> Give me the beans. I'm not for the forget this birthright. My friend, <laughs> can we? We, we go chop birthright. <laughs> we want to eat beans. You say, birthright. <laughs> you sold it. But after he started crying. When they now told him that, that thing you said beans. <laughs> no wonder Job, Jude called him Bebalos. He was a like profaner. He didn't know spiritual things. He thought of bees as beans. What's spirit? What's birthright? May God, I, this year, last year I prayed that prayer. May this year God deliver you from further bebalos. Huh, when they say birthright, when they say anointing, when they say presence, you are like, ah, they don't have any presence. Some when they say fasting, you are eating. You are like, oh, they said every day we'll fast. You are bebalos. You don't, you don't measure sacred things. Yeah. Look, this kind go out by fasting and prayer. There are some demons in your life, eh? If you don't build spiritual capacity with fasting, they will never respond. I'm telling you. Ah, I know. Listen, there are, some, what, there are some prayers when I go and pray. And I fast. When I come, I know I won't struggle. So, this, I'll get there. This is how you're able to measure what to do to come back. If you just do it by chancing on it, there will be a problem. You will never be able to properly accumulate a pattern that can sharpen your skills. Because you're always chancing on it. You don't know what to do. You should know how many hours you clog and you know you're in the spirit. Hallelujah. No, you should know that me, if I do two hours, non-interrupted, I'm there. You should know. And as you just Lord, you know you're merciful. God will say, it's true, I'm merciful. Lord, you know you're gracious. It's true, I'm gracious. But just as a child cannot drive a car, it's the same way if you follow this mercy, mercy, grace thing. You will not drive. When it comes to prayer, stop doing God is merciful. God will understand. Oh yeah. That understanding means that car won't drive it that. Because you need a skill to move the car. But you are sleeping. While men sleep. This is what Jesus told his own disciples. It's too late. They left him in temptation. He said the hour of temptation is now. He must say Jesus. Do you like the message I'm preaching? Yes. I like the way you're all stiff. Number two, 46 verse 10. I sound 46 verse 10. Come to show you some points to use in your retreat. It will help you. There are some things you have to, and this is what you are going to do from tomorrow onwards. Find a date, find a place. If you, if you don't have money, go to Achimota Forest. One of my boys here told me, he said, Daddy, when you told us to retreat, I've been sleeping in Achimota Forest since Monday. Yes. That tells me that in you, you have no excuse. Somebody's in this room. He told me, Daddy, I've gone to the Hachimata Forest. I have slept there from Monday to Thursday. In the bush. Almost reachable. <laughs> be serious. Oh. Be, tell you, never be serious. Whilst others are climbing trees to pray. <laughs> and they are, we are going for a Christmas service was my father the Lord. Then we saw some bush. I said, man of God. I said, Daddy, you said, man of God. Charlie, you pack and you go bush and go on pie. I said, Papi, you have four. Because <laughs> yeah. one of his, his, I think his best man also, he told me a story. They were going to Kumasi VIP, but I said, Stop here. In the middle of nowhere, he just entered the bush. Yeah. Desire. Went to pray. Kaya, Kaya, Kaya. And from there, after I called Koko Konongu, from there, he walked to Kumasi. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you will meet people in heaven, no? When you see people, they say, I see 0244. They were not sleeping. They were not with pizza in their mouth, more being their leg in the bed. I asked how they now the pizza show up. Then you go and quote a certain scripture in the book of Daniel. And Daniel desired no certain bread. Eh? 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 Is pizza not a certain bread? So this is a pizza fast. <laughs> the Lord delivered this generation. Pizza fast. Pizza fast. 
No, there's a level in your spiritual life. You shouldn't even ask questions that prophet, should we eat this or eat that? Hallelujah. No, you should be so focused, you're not asking questions of any way out. Hallelujah. I'm telling you. Hallelujah. What is happening in your life? You have, you have been here for a long time. Start seeking, taking fast serious. If you are even angry at God, God, this thing my stomach is doing me. Here. Look, God, I'm going to, you, I know right now I, my faith is not there yet. I will take food. But please, after this food fast, let it clear. So that you can get your life on track. It's a dangerous thing to be a Christian who is not fasting. There's a dimension you want to get to in life and your flesh must sleep. Yes, Somebody invited me to a certain city in Nigeria. I'm supposed to go there. Listen. I was thinking, I said, should I go with Pastor Elvis and Malik? Should go? Don't go and be praying. I'll be sleeping. <laughs> I said, this is not a joke. It's a champion city of witchcraft. Deadly one. <laughs> they are beginning to pray that, Father... Take that desire from our father. <laughs> Let's read to go. One to go. Let's go. Be still and know that what I am. Be still and know that what. What this means is this, that for you to have a proper retreat, there are three things that must characterize your retreat. Three things. Number one. Number one. Three things must characterize your retreat for your retreat to work. Number one. Intimacy. Intimacy means you shut down from everything. Listen, whatever gets your attention gets your affection. That means that when we say intimacy should characterize your retreat, if the phone will get your attention, put it off. When it's my birthday, I'm on a retreat, you know what I do? I put on my phone at midnight. So that the text message people have sent, I receive it and I read it in just about 30 minutes and I go back. I don't even reply. I go back. <clears throat> so if the phone is going to distract, distract you, take it off. Because anything that is distracting your attention is what you are intimate with. Don't get it twisted. I was watching a documentary of a lady who said that she was married to her husband. Her husband said he wants to marry a second wife. He said since the second wife came, she doesn't get attention. Yes, it's true. Because you are the new, you are the old. This is the new. So this one will get the attention. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. If you're a lady here and a guy wants to make you his second wife, hey. know that if he went for two, you'll go for three. Yeah. Soon you'll be third wife and you'll be parked in the garage. <laughs> yes, I'm serious. Don't, don't put yourself in a situation that will be very difficult for you to come into. So number one, what? Intimacy. Intimacy means separate from anything that will take your attention. Separate. Avoid the TV, avoid it. Number two, in that intimacy, there's something called privacy. Privacy. In waiting on God, you must learn private moments. Private times. So this, I'm showing you the things that characterizes the efficacy of retreat. Intimacy. It means when you went there, you can count how many hours you touched your phone. You can count the minutes that you spent more time off your phone than on it. That's intimacy. Hey, are we together? Are people tired? No. I'm sorry, don't get tired though. Six hours, you took us what? Boa. Don't do that. Amen. Amen. Are we here? Intimacy means you are separated from anything that will take a distraction from you. Separate yourself from it. I said, what? So if you have a favorite juice you like, it's not retreat to take it to. No, I'm serious. Because the moment you do that, eh, you are doing something to your brain. Your brain will be looking for other things it likes, aside food. The first door to your desires is appetite. That's why any man who can control his appetite cannot control his sexual appetite. Yes, if a man does not know how to fast, there will be a problem. Adinimi <laughs> shabosh. Number three, exclusivity. Exclusivity means that you are fasting away from people. You are fasting away from common things you do every time you wake up in the morning and you are doing something different when it comes to your retreat. That's why in a retreat, you spend more hours praying, more hours reading the Bible. More, you, so if in, a, in your normal day, read two chapters a day, retreat, you do 10 chapters, exclusive. You give exclusive, exclusive right to spiritual matters. 
please, after this retreat you are coming to do, something has happened to your life for the better in Jesus' name. Amen. I said something has happened to your life for the better in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Now, so you need to understand this. Why am I saying what I'm saying? Better work goes neglected or unattended to. Allow work to go by default than to allow prayer to go by neglect. When it's work, like church work, it's better that one goes so every day I do. But when it comes to prayer, never. Why? Neglected closet is the secret of all spiritual decline. If you're not growing spiritually, there's something wrong with your personal time with God. It's not any magic. It's simple. You are not spending enough time with God. And hear what I'm talking about. There are many kinds of retreats. Corporate retreats, church retreats, camp meeting. This retreat, I'm talking about your personal one. Because if it's not personal first, it can't be corporate. You know how you can go to a corporate meeting and you can't hear anything for yourself? So many times, eh, I have mentors who have different locations for their um, camp meeting and all that. I don't go to those places when I'm doing personal retreats. Because I don't sleep. The workers know me. I can't be in the room. If, when you are working, somebody, hey, man of God, man of God, you won't, you won't sleep. Number two, your, your conscience will not help you when they are doing service and you are in the room. But, so I go somewhere nobody knows me so I can be in the room. Recently, when I even went to God, the guy said, I said, the guy came to me and said, I said, I came to me and said, I was coming for prayer. So. As soon as he said that, now I turned, I said, ah, somebody is filing papers for you. And he said, hmm. He just slapped. I said, I'll see you later. The Lord just opened my eyes because of what he said. But sometimes you want to go and hide because if you don't take care, people will come to your door. Man of God, please pray for us. No, no, because they know you. So the next time you hear I'm doing retreat overseas, don't be angry. Why is it getting to be? Can't we do retreats in Ghana? Hallelujah. Do you understand? Yeah. Oh, some people say glory. The Lord bless you all. Yeah. Some people want me to be in Ghana for the rest of my life. Oh, small abroche. Abroche, I just I never be as Those days they do don don for you to come to. The whole village will escort you to America, <laughs> and it will be a national issue. So the village knows that. Hey, come here, come here. And they'll be waiting for you. Hallelujah. Privacy, exclusivity, and intimacy. The privacy. No, sorry, the privacy. What I said was that when you when you get to that place, it, it must be private. It's not a corporate event. You and God alone. That's what I mean. Yes. An alone place. Alone. Private. Neglected closet, the secret of all spiritual decline. Now, Matthew 6, 6 says what? When you pray in the closet, we go there, Matthew 6, 6, and you shut the door, pray to the Father who is in secret, and he shall reward you openly. I just said to you, if you want open rewards, do secret prayers and fasting. If you want open rewards, I repeat, do what? Secret prayers and fasting. The prayers we do in church is powerful, but that's not what brings the breakthrough. Please, after praying in church about a miracle, if you don't go and do personal prayers about it, you are just playing around potential. It might never land. It must be personal. There must be a personal energy that is, you know, put on it. Remember what I said in prayer, that what happens, whatever you desire, when you pray, so it's not what we desire, what you desire, when you pray, you have a result. Praise the Lord. All right. Wonderful. So now, what you do at a retreat. Now, number one, retreats can be done weekly. They can be done monthly. They can be done yearly. In Ephesus, I advocate that, at least on your birthday. Why is it a birthday? Every time there is a monumental transition in a season, you must meet that season with a retreat. If you don't meet that season with a retreat, what it means is that whatever was released into that season, you might not be able to access all of it. It means you might not get the full benefit of a season because you didn't approach it with a retreat. So beginning of the year, you retreat. So you can pick God's mind about the year. Number two, beginning of your birthday, a new year in your, your biology has started. If you were a pastor, I would advise at least quarterly you do a retreat, a church worker. Do a personal retreat. It can be Friday after work, you go and rest. The whole of Saturday you are there. Thank God Ephesus meets in the evening. The whole of Sunday morning you are wherever you are. Sunday afternoon you come back to service. 
A moment where you can hear God and put yourself on the right track. What is a retreat then? What is a retreat then? What is a retreat then? Because I want to give you points so you can go and use to pray. I'm taking my time to define it. Retreat or waiting. It's a time set apart for God. Remember what I said, there must be focus. That gives you access to what God wants to do, the plan, and its strategy to accomplishing it. A retreat is a time set apart by God for God that causes you to know what God wants to do, the plan, and the strategy to accomplish it. It's amazing how in civil business circles, a company will go for company retreat, business retreat, just to go and strategize for the market or the coming year. When the fiscal year ends in August, September, we go for financial retreat to budget for the next year. And usually when the finance minister, they go like that, they go for Ministry of Finance budget retreat meetings. And they go and plan all the indicators and the deliverables, objectives and missions of how the economy can be boosted. You cannot do it in everyday routine. You have to separate yourself from town so you can go and get information Thinking only on the subject. This is what retreats are about. So if even businesses understand the power of retreating, why not Christians? So you have done great disservice to your personality. I am not against parties. Don't get me wrong. Somebody came to me and said, so daddy, you want to do a get together for us? I said, no. <laughs> Until I'm satisfied that we have learned the spiritual dimensions of even retreating then we can veer into partying. Because you don't need the Holy Ghost to party. You let's do party here, you'll be shocked. That kind of dances people dance. Come alive. <laughs> so the flesh has come alive. So you can't say something like that. Get like that. Huh? You have seen that dance. You have doing like this, like this. Like caterpillar. We do business retreats. We do um, company retreats. We do financial retreats, retreats. We never do spiritual retreats for our health. That's a retreat you must do for your spirit. Find a place and get to. Get to a location nobody knows you at. And spend an a long time with God. Remember I told you, focus. There must be an agenda. Lord, the way my life is going, I need answers. He must answer me if I call on him. That's what the scripture says. Psalm 40 said, I'll wait on the Lord and I'll patiently wait on the Lord to see what you tell me. So you must learn that art so you can hear well for yourself. What do you do at a retreat? What do I do when I go for a retreat? Recently, I'm having a conversation with my father and Lord, and he told me something. He said, When he went for a retreat recently, God said something to him. He said, Just thank me. Papa Adebo he said, I went for a retreat one time for Festival of Miracles, 70 day fasting. When he went, he had prayed for 19 days. He was not hearing God. Then he asked God, God, why are you not answering me? And God said, you're not asking me what you have to do here. That's what I'm saying. If you don't go without a focus, chances are that you will come back wasting your money. You just went to sleep. No dream. <laughs> you went to waste money. You didn't dream once. And sometimes the pride of our humanity goes like, we went to rest. <laughs> it's a spiritual retreat, not a resting retreat. You went to sleep. It's not rest. Two different things. So very important, you must understand. He said, when he prayed that prayer, God said, just thank me. And he said, that year, many testimonies happen. What do you do when you go for a retreat? You enter profuse thanks. Open your retreat with thanksgiving. Open your retreat with thanksgiving. So when I was speaking to my father-in-law, I was telling him a story. He said, prophet, I began to thank God for everything that has ever happened in my life. From my childhood, the things that went bad, the things that went good, I began to thank God. That's the time you begin to thank God for the good and the bad. Giving thanks for all things. Psalm 115, what does it say? Not unto us, O Lord. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Psalm 115. Thank you, Holy Spirit. What does it say? Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but unto thy name be glory. For thy mercy and for thy truth's sake. That's what he said. So when you go to a retreat, you give thanks. You give thanks. Psalm 118 says what? Give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good and his mercy is endureth forever. Psalm 118 verse 1. Give, give thanks to the Lord for he is good and because his mercy endureth forever. Then he begins to list the things God has done for them. 
Psalm 136 also talks about it. Different scriptures. Psalm 92, what I say? Psalm 92 verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord because. Psalm 92 verse 1. Allah kobas kaba. This is a Sabbath day. He said, this is a song for the Sabbath. Sabbath is rest. So retreating, this is a retreating psalm. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises unto the name of the Lord Most High. Next. Why? Why do you do that? To show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and for thy faithfulness every night. Next, 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 next. Upon the instrument of ten strings. Now this is David. David had two. David had three instruments aside the harp. The ten and the eight string lyre. It's called a lyre. Y L Y R E. L Y R E. It's called the tenth and the eighth string. The harp is usually four to six strings. But the lyre is eight to ten strings. And say, give thanks on the, on the instrument of the ten strings, upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound. Verse 4. For thou, Lord, hath made me glad through thy work, and I'll triumph in the works of thy hand. Colossians 4.2. Colossians 4 2. I'm showing you the things to do. When you get there, begin to thank God. Give him thanks for all things. Thank God for your mother. Thank God for your father. Thank God for the previous year. The previous year, your birthday, when you were 37, when you were 26. Thank God the Lord. Thank you for 26. Thank you for my failures. Thank you for the temptation. As you are thanking God, something will happen to your spirit. So in retreat, you don't begin outside thanksgiving. He said, continue in prayer and watching in the same with what? Thanksgiving. Thank God for your, the way you were born. Thank God for the house you came from. I'm telling you, this will do you great blessing. It will put you in perspective. This is the time when you are thanking God. Eh? You begin to count your blessings one by one. You realize that eh? all your complaints, you have been ungrateful. God has really done much for you. Even this year, some people are like, God, you see, we have a way of measuring. You know, I, I like how um, government works. We have mission, we have objective, then we have objective one, objective two, objective three, objective four. Then we also have, uh, 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 there's something they call uh, the PIs. What's, what's the name? The a APIs or PIs or something. <laughs> yes, the KPIs, yeah. yes. Key point what? Key performance. key performance indicators. So the key performance indicators are actually the steps you take. Am I lying? Yeah. To get what you want to get done. So in the spirit, you are looking for a marriage. You are looking for a new house. You are looking for a new relationship. You are looking for a scholarship. But there are key performance indicators which regards waking up early, giving your tight, faithfulness in service in church. If those things are not accomplished, the bigger picture you are blaming God for, you will never see it. That's when you give thanks, you begin to realize that, oh my God, I've been unfaithful. I should have been awake when we were praying. Oh Lord, I thank you. Thank you, give me a second chance. I you have done numbers. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm telling you, God showed this thing. I learned it when I was how many years in the Lord. I realized that uh, no day can you blame God that he's at fault. Yeah. No, the day I learned that, uh, I'll show you something. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Thanksgiving. Tell your neighbor Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. Oh, tell your neighbor Thanksgiving. Oh, paria pasco paria da shayaya. Psalm 50 verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Let everything, Psalm 150, sorry. Psalm 150 verse 6. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. So when you go for a retreat, you're thanking the Lord. Thank God for your mother. Thank God for where you were born. Thank you for your area. Thank God for what, you, what you've gone through in life. As you are thanking God, I'm telling you, you'll just be sitting on your bed and say, Ah, wusaye ye, oh wusena se. It will just, whoa, 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 whoa. You know what happens, sir? I cannot, I'm so happy. I was, I was, my parents were Baptists who moved to the Church of Pentecost before I became who I was. Thanksgiving made me realize that God had it set up. If you don't thank God, then the thing God used to make you is the very thing you will blame God for exposing you to. Do you know what it means? It means that you are insulting the intelligence of God, that you are not wise. Meanwhile, you are happy at who you are now. Meanwhile, what you went through is what made you. That's why thanksgiving can never be overemphasized. And every time God goes like, you owe me thanksgiving. He said, praise waited for thee in Zion. And unto thee shall the vow be paid. That means praise is a vow you must pay. Hallelujah. Every day you show up before God. Thank you. Hallelujah. Do you know what it means to wake up? Hallelujah. Not everybody wakes up the same. You know some, there's some that The face paralysis, what do you call it? The, the half face, your face gets it's facial paralysis. No, you know, there's a way you wake up, your face drooping like all of a sudden. 
Bell's palsy. You just wake up and all your face is just, it's like your eyes are falling. And you don't know what you did in the night. Selenku. <laughs> you wake up and your mouth is down. Your eye is down. You're like, hey. Every day you wake up in the morning, go and stand in front of the mirror and say, I, I don't like my face. Hey, hey. You are not thankful enough. That's why your tank is always empty. Be thankful. Be thankful. Be thankful and fill your tank. When you go for a retreat, go and thank God. God, I thank you for 2022. I thank him for the failures. Thank him for the successes. Thank him for the things you didn't do right. Thank him for the things you got to do right. You will see that you have so much to pray for and thank God for. He has a way of exposing the things you've taken for granted. Thanksgiving. Giving thanks for all things. Giving thanks for all things. Giving thanks for all things. Psalm 170 says what? Psalm 107, 107 says what? Oh, I love this scripture. Psalm 107 verse 5. Verse 5. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Say, I give thanks to God. 15, sorry. Psalm 105 verse 107 verse 15. Verse 15. Verse 15. It says, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for the wonderful works to the children of men. Next verse. For what has he done? He has broken the gates of brass. Satan came in the night to eat your flesh. You know you were not prayerful 2022, but certain things didn't touch you. The best that Juju did to you was give you a backache. It should have killed you, but you are still alive. Because he didn't allow the, bro- the gates of brass to, catch, to get access to you. Please, let's, listen. When you go for it, you get to thank God. Though. So first day you do Thanksgiving. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you for every aspect of my life. Amen. Amen. The second thing you did last year, but I've added some things to it. Evaluation. You have to do a spiritual father to child. Spirit to spirit. Lightened by a word. You do a father to father child kind of um, evaluation. You and God sit face to face. Now the Bible says in Psalm 51 verse number 6, there is a reason why David had to tell God the truth. That in sin where you was I shaping. And I was born in iniquity. See what he said. What did he say? Read and, read and let's go. Thou desired what? Truth in my, in what parts? What he's trying to tell you now is this, that anytime you come before God, you got to be honest. If you can't be honest with God, I don't know where you'll be honest again. Like it's God you are come to pretend like, oh, you were spiritual. Like you, you really, you, were t- you took God. No, it's not. Be- Thou desired truth. So David was saying that the reason why I spilled out my sin is because when I stand before God, God requires truth from my inside. That means I'm not, I'm not doing lip service. I'm speaking the truth that, God, I didn't try. I fell. I shouldn't have fallen from the, from the inside. Psalm 51 verse 6, that's what it says. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Please, are we together here? Yeah. Please, let's focus, let's focus, let's focus. Are we together? Yeah. This is going to help you to characterize your year. Please... Let's focus. All right. So you do an evaluation, but with honesty. James 1.19 says that receive with meekness. Meekness means accepting a verdict or an allotment for your life. Receive with meekness the engrafted. Stop playing the games. James 1. No, 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 no. Um, Sorry. James what? Is it James 1.19? No, find it for me. Receive meekness and gratitude. 17 is not, no, it's not 17. Uh, 21, yes. 21, thank you. 19 is different. 21. Uh huh. Wherefore, lay apart filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word of God, which is able to bring you salvation. So please, when you go for a retreat, evaluation must be done honestly. Honest evaluation. Don't lie. That's why you require privacy. You are not doing it in a group. You are doing it with God. You and God alone. You know why? Terry, God can give you an instruction huh? that come and sweep here and at two. But you came to sweep at three. And when you came at three, you were sweeping. Nobody was sweeping. So everybody, oh, Terry, you are doing well. Oh. But before God, you didn't do well. Because he told you two. You came at three. That's why it's private and honest. Because somebody might think you are doing well, but you know you didn't do well. Someone might think that, oh, you didn't insult the person, but you have damaged the person in your mind. <laughs> hey, that you, I like the way you comport yourself. Oh. So anybody who gives such a, an accolade and they don't smile back, it means they, it's not true. <laughs> they damage the person in their heart. 
Oh, like I like the way he didn't react. Oh, it's okay. They have killed you. They have killed you. That is okay. They have killed you here. Amen. Tell your neighbor honest evaluation. If you did what you shouldn't have done, you watch what you shouldn't watch, you touch what you shouldn't touch. Child of God, be honest. And then I mean, I best for know. He has seen it already. I remember when I was in primary school, primary five, there was a teacher I had. He said, there was a certain man who had dug a hole and he was looking for a crab in it. And when he was looking at a crab, he was covering it as if nobody had seen him. Then the teacher gave a certain funny, he said, whilst you have turned your bottom like that, God is also seeing your back. <laughs> so you think you are hiding to cut the crab, but your back is exposed. So don't think when you were doing it, God was not aware. He's the same person who told you don't do it. So don't you think when you were doing it, it was there? Ah, oh, Dinimish. Ah, the Holy Ghost, when you were grieving him, did he leave? He didn't go to Kukran to me. He was in your heart. The Holy Ghost was inside you. Whilst you were doing it, he knows. Be honest. Be honest. So that the thing can, you can receive redemption and move on. Open up to the Lord. The Lord, this thing I didn't try. I need help. I didn't try at all. I need help. But be honest. Evaluation. So what do you evaluate yourself in? Number one, spiritual transformation. I just told you something. Spiritual transformation. God, I, I have a diary. Eh? God has given me the number of chapters I read a day, the number of hours I pray a day, and the number of times, the number of books I should read a month. I have it. It's a chart. That means that everybody who wants to make any spiritual inroads or stride must have indicators that max it. How many hours do you pray a day? You can't tell me that as a Christian, you pray any time you feel like praying. No, you don't go far. You are trying to access the spirit of prayer without the habit of prayer. It won't work. You need the habit before you can get the spirit. That means you have to set a time. Every 10 o'clock to 11, I pray. Standard. Whoever comes in your life as a beloved, they must know that time. That 10 to 11, I'm off. I'm praying. The moment my beloved conforms to that time, then compromising in the relationship will not happen. But if because of you, I cut that prayer time off, what will happen is that once I can stop my spiritual growth for you, I'm compromised. Spiritual transformation. How many hours were you supposed to pray last year you didn't pray? After 10 years of Christianity, you are still praying 20 minutes and you are struggling. No, it should tell you, you have, you have yes, transformation to happen in spirit. How many chapters did you read last year? Per day. I know you were doing two chapters at your own pace. Bruh, they don't grow fast like that. They don't grow fast like that. In this dispensation, you can't be reading two chapters to fight the kind of devils you are fighting. The demons that have come, they are very strong spirits. You need stronger intensities. And ma- Look, the deception is so high. I, had, I saw it on your status. Something about a, a, a nagram. Yes. If you don't know, don't go and Google it. Enneagram. Enneagram. Some of you don't know. You are watching my face. That white has got it to be so serious. There is one thing a lot of Christians practice. If I touch it, I'll get a response on YouTube and all that. I don't even mind. Yoga. No. What what we have gotten to, eh? if you don't become spiritual transformation spirit, you will come Compromise your destiny and you will not understand. Don't joke, oh, don't joke. I'm telling you something serious. It's not everywhere you go, it's not everything you do. But how will I be able to access this truth? The Holy Ghost must open my spirit. Please, I'm showing you something that will benefit you. For that. This is something we don't, that's why I said to you when I started preaching that this is not something we teach in church. So many Christians don't know how to retreat. They don't even know what you're going to do. They think it's like those times that when you want to do retreat, you go and hide somewhere 30 days fasting to collect power. No. It's for your life. You have to do an evaluation, spiritual transformation. How many spiritual books did I read? As a Christian, if you are reading more novels than Christian books, there's a problem. You are still educating your soul, not your spirit. Why we are getting to, you can't enter the battlefront with that uneducated spirit. You didn't read a single spiritual book. Warfare, prayer, fasting. You couldn't train your spirit. No, there's a problem. You must build capacity. I said what? I know that you are thinking about what you did this year. And nye, 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 nye. Spiritual transformation. Number two, the transformation of your mind. Mental transformation. The Bible says Romans 2, 12, the verse number two, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind must be renewed by the word of God. 
Your mind must be renewed by what? I can't hear you. The mind must be renewed by what? Amen. Amen. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Now, the mind, when we talk about the transformation of your mind, it's not just, there are, there are four quotients I want to address. Four quotients. Number one, the IQ, intelligence quotient. Number two, there's something called SQ, social quotient. Number three, there's something called EQ, emotional quotient. And number four, there's something called AQ, adversity quotient. Intelligence quotient is what you read, your area of study, academics. Um, in fact, you need biblical intelligence to be able to articulate the things you teach. So if you don't know things from the Bible, you don't read, you are not intrigued. Ah, what is this man talking about? Then you check the verses yourself. The Bible says in Acts 17, verse 11, the Bereans were more noble than the Thessalonians because they searched out. How to get intelligence? You have to exercise your mind. If there's nothing in your colloquial, God can even, listen, yes, there's nothing in your head. That's why in the day of temptation, you don't even remember the scripture. You must study the scripture, memorize it. Paul said to the church, if you're able to remember this, you'll be saved. So your salvation is in remembering scriptures. And it doesn't come, I'm telling you, you know, there are some scriptures that will not stick till you read a book that quoted it. So every day thing is, it's, it's not the Bible. You have to read a book or you must listen to a tape that spoke about that scripture. When it's explained, you'll be shocked. You will never forget that scripture. So mental transformation is part of the analysis you do. Did my mind change? First is intelligence quotient. There's something about my intelligence improve. Paul, prophet is preaching here using finance, using business, using this, using that. And none of us here actually go back to go and check the market. What is prophet talking about? Bullish, bearish, stock exchange. What is this? What is bonds? Two days ago, I was praying, the Holy Ghost says, steady the bonds and the bonds market. Because apparently, that's where the economy is saying that. When you have invested in bonds, they will haircut you. Then I said, Lord, why is it in here? It's not in TB, it's in bonds. And the Lord was telling that there is a return on bonds that is higher than TB. So I have to go investigate. If you want to be rich, it doesn't happen by chance. Joseph was intelligent in agricultural matters. Don't, don't just be. Daniel was not used by God to become the president of the Magi because he woke up one day and he was doing, ayo, ayo, and he just appeared. Intelligent master of the presidents. It's not true. Bible says he was skilled in the knowledge of the Medes and Persians. He understood the accountants of the Babylonians. Whatever field you are in, excel. Excel. If you're an accountant student, excel. You're a master student, be the best because God will use that area of expertise to lift you up. I told you the last time, if you don't have, you won't add. What do you have in your hand? Didn't you hear that question? It's either what you have in your hand or what you have in the house. Because God can't multiply from thin air. Though he can, he would rather prefer human sympathy to angelic embassy. What do you have for him to multiply? Don't you think Jesus could have pulled bread from the sky? Because the last time he came, he brought bread from heaven. And he was sharing it at the, at the shore. But this time around, he said, what do, do you have any bread? And somebody brought their bread. Then he multiplied it. That means if you don't provide something, there's nothing to multiply. Learn. Improve your IQ. Read books. Read books. Number two, social quotient. Social quotient is the ability to network and relate to people and learn to keep relationships. And, main, and in fact, it's called social intelligence. A lot of people are not socially intelligent. I'm telling you. And the painful thing is that, sir, when you don't master it, a day will come, you are going for an interview, and now your classmate you didn't talk well with. His father owns the company. <laughs> then, then you see this nonsense attitude. Bosu, how far? How far? You know the nonsense between the two of you. So you know that this job, you're not getting it. Social intelligence. The people, when you talk to them, they don't have a friend that is more than 20 years in their life. Two years, three years, two years. Don't be like that. You have to have people who can stay. That tells you something is happening to your social intelligence. Number three. And number two, sorry. Number three, sorry. Your, the, the next one is what we call adversity quotient. Adversity quotient is the ability to go through storms, to weather storms, toughness. In the, that, when you are, in, you are adversity intelligent, 
you know that every trouble that comes has an expiration date. But they are so important. They are not adversely intelligent. They will, they will give in right now. They will start talking, cursing themselves because it's like, oh, this thing can't work. This is, is too much for me. No. Adversity intelligence. You must know. It builds toughness. I say it builds what? Toughness. It does what? The last one is emotional intelligence. I'll show you three, four traits of emotional unintelligent people. Low emotional intelligence. Argumentative. Every conversation must end up in argument. It's low intelligence in your emotions. Number two, blaming others all the time. Every problem is someone who did it, not you. It's a low emotional intelligence. I wish I had a picture. I'll send it so that you know that I'm not dialing anybody's number. I'm dialing your number, Mumba. It's, it's the truth. <laughs> number three, not listening. If your listening capacity is low, it's indicative of a low emotional, it's a low EQ. That's making you not listen. You don't listen. And listening is not just hearing. Get it? Listening is the educative instrument of your ear and understanding that causes a change. That's listening. When you tell somebody, won't hear them, it's not because they didn't hear what you said the last time. They have not made necessary changes to what you addressed. That means they didn't hear. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when we say listening, somebody who has a listening ear, the person doesn't just hear you, they understand what you said and make necessary changes to their life based on the things they heard. That is a listening ear. So not listening is lack of emotional quotient. It's low. So some of you must do a mass. I argue with everybody. There is nothing in my life that's my fault. Everybody is to believe. That's irresponsibility. Am I preaching to somebody? Yeah. <laughs> Next week we are not meeting, so let me finish what I have to say and go. Hallelujah. Are you together? Are you here? So blaming others? Emotional what? What? Argumentative? Have you noticed that some when you talk to them every day, ends up in argument? Number three? Not listening. You know, James says, be swift to hear and slow to speak. Don't be quick to always explain yourself. You, that's a, a listening ear that even if somebody is wrong, you wait for the person to finish talking before you say yourself. Don't quit. No, no, it's not right. No, it's not right. Lastly, anytime you are at the peak of low emotional quotient, you have emotional at best. You flip all of a sudden. Without warning. It's low emotional intelligence. Yeah. Oh yeah, because people are very aware that when I flip and I outburst, I will say things people will hear. It will give me a judgment that my return to say sorry can never correct. It might never correct it. Oh yeah, this is why you have to do mass and go like, there are certain opportunities I could have got, but these are things I didn't cause transformation in. So at the office, I flipped and my boss saw it. And because of that, he said, you promote me. You should be able to do the mass in your room and do the mass. That there's some things that is causing you not to express destiny. Who's why you're quiet? You are really, I thank, I thank God you are meditating on the thing something. Yeah, adversity, intelligence. Life is tough. Means life will hit you. It's not that I can say, is it only me in this life? Only me. And no, nobody knows the trouble I've seen. Nobody knows. And you become tweety. No, you are tweety. Because of Twitter? Bas, bas, bas. Hallelujah. Your adversity question should be high. Count it all joining fallen diverse temptations. Adversity question might be high. You must be tough as a nail. Say, I'm tough as a nail. Oh, you're not saying, I'm tough as a nail. Amen. Amen. Because what you are getting to, you need to be tough. Tomorrow's a holiday, right? Yeah. Let me keep on preaching. I <laughs> mean, uh, I got to flow, man. Yeah, I got to flow. So please, you have to come to this emotional intelligence. 
in, in intelligence, your IQ must increase. Your emotional intelligence must also increase. Everything around you must increase. I know some of you are doing math. Like, hey, you don't know my emotional intelligence is low. Sometimes just flip and say, oh, don't, I'm sorry, I don't know why I got angry. It's low intelligence. Very low. Why? The fool, uh, the anger dwells in the bosom of a fool. So if you are wise, you won't get angry. Even if you get angry, there's a way to carry it out. Like, you know, the wise get displeased. They don't display anger in this fool. No, 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 no. Like what you did, I didn't like it. So next time, and you can say I'm serious. That's a, a kind of anger of the wise. What does that mean? By the time I'm done talking, it's constructive. Because you see, when you are angry, the side, the, even the English course, you are mad. <laughs> Something happens to the synapses in your head. So if you're not careful, you might say things you don't mean to say. And might jump yourself in the process. And by the time you come to yourself, you can't undo what you said. Too many women have destroyed their destiny because of anger. No, no, don't get angry and the man will, hey, that's the end though. Hmm. Next one, physical health. You must check your weight. No, yes, I'm serious. No, hey, 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 are you here? If you don't know how to take care of your body, this ministry, you won't do it. No, you, you, do you think you will fulfill destiny as a ghost? There's only one ghost called the Holy Ghost. The rest cannot fulfill anything. Only one ghost can fulfill destiny. The Holy Ghost. The rest, finish. You die, you are gone. You have to learn to take care of your body. Rest. I'll show you a secret today. I usually stay up a lot of times, many times on my own. There are times God tells me, go and sleep. You know why? The moment you start staying awake, something happens to your brain. Your brain begins to expand. Yeah. You ask doc, you tell you. So you, you see, that thing you feel like fogginess and heaviness in your head. Something's happening to your brain mass. It's, some, it's, some, it's a weird distance. So you feel like your brain mass is increasing. The more you use it, because you are staying, the brain wants to sleep, and you used to say, stay awake. So it's becoming some way. It, so the more you are doing that, you say, you are alert. You are, so instead of you to be resting, uh -huh. number two, there is something, oh, today I feel like, because you are going to do it. There is something we have. You see all these children that are working here, from age one to seven, there is something about brain operation. You know, there's the left and the right, analytical and pictorial. Now, the pictorial part focuses on something called theta. Now, the state of theta is where you learn things subconsciously. And it's from age one to seven. That is where you imagine things a lot. Children can daydream. They can have an imaginary kitchen. And they are fetching sand and they say they are selling watches. It's theta. <laughs> Do you understand? So even as a pastor, if I don't learn these things, eh, I'll be a daft pastor. I cannot articulate to certain kinds of people. I cannot have a proper argument with an atheist who went to Harvard. I'll be locked up. So you see, you know the word, you have power, but you can't articulate. This is the difference between Paul and Apollos. Paul knew how to write, but he couldn't talk. Apollos knew how to talk, but he couldn't write anything. Yeah, there's no epistle of Apollos. Go and check it. But he was mighty in speech. Could debate everywhere. You have to balance the two. Your writing and your speech must balance. So there's a theta dimension. And the theta is that you don't, I told you last time, you don't learn anything consciously. You learn things subconsciously. And the theta state is this. I'll show you an example. Have you noticed you'll be watching a movie and you just doze off? And everything you were watching on the movie enters your dream. And you wake up and you're watching the movie after two weeks. You don't remember the movie they were showing on Ghana TV. When you start watching, it's like, ah, you know the end of the story before it started. You enter theta. Anytime you sleep, your brain enters theta. That's what makes you dream. So actually, many hypnosis and people who use reprogramming of your brain, they do it when you sleep. So whilst you are sleeping, they either play music in the background or they put earpiece in your ears and detect sentences. So when you wake up, you think yourself a different person because you slept with something. I did this many times in my early years of Christianity. Kenny Higgins' message used to be in my ears. Sometimes when I'm preaching, you think I'm sounding like Kenny Higgins. I didn't go and listen to his message two weeks ago. It is 10, 15 years ago. I put it in my ears. I sleep with it. I wake up. So by the time I wake up, I know things I did not read. Theta. I come to sleep. 
I wonder why. I wonder why. You are calling it cools. It's hell. It's hell. It's hell. It's not cools. Who the cools are that? You are using cools to cool you down. You will see what you dream about. That means that I can program my dream by the kind of messages I play to sleep. Hallelujah. Check it. Do you know the shocking thing about it? You wake up and go and listen to the message and nothing you heard me explaining the dream. Some of you dream and go like, prophet, it's as if we came back to church and you were preaching again. But you were giving other points I didn't hear in the message. God is trying to tell you there are things in my spirit I couldn't say in the mic. Hallelujah. It's only in such a spirit you will get the trans transmission. I'm not teaching you how to use your mind or astral solical powers. I'm showing you something that the world has mastered without the Holy Ghost. And they are using it against us. You want to know scriptures? Sleep with all your Bible. By the time you wake up, you know how to recite some things. And you don't know where it came from. Sleep with it. Play it. Back. John 5. John 8. Let it play. Book of Romans. And put it. Play and sleep. <sighs> By the time you wake up, it's there. You want to sleep? You want to sleep? Play um, 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 Teoflosande instruments. Um, what? Kresdava instrumentation. Slow tune. You'll be shocked. By the time you wake up, musical notes are in your spirit. That's how it works. When you go for a retreat, this is what you do. Never in a retreat should you leave the room quiet. Oh, you'll be shocked. You are in a retreat and there's no sound. You are just reading. You'll be shocked. Amen? Are we together? Never in a retreat should you do that. So what you should do now is this, that every time you're in a retreat, there's a message going on in the background. There's a scripture going on. There's a music, there's a note, there's worship. So when you wake up from sleep, something is playing. When you are walking, something is playing. If possible, put three or four messages on repeat. Morning to evening is playing. Two hours after, next two hours, three hours, repeat. Two hours, three hours, two hours, three hours. You'll be shocked what will happen to your spirit, man. This is what I, look, 2008, I remember I had a vision. Almost every prophet I know in this life came in a dream. And I was in a park. From Nana. And what? Prophet no, Bishop Wedepo, they were just laying hands in my dream. Then they, yes, it is listed. Some of the impartations say, you get it in dream before they lay hands on you. Yeah, I'm telling you. You can't live your life to chance. <laughs> Fiscal health. Fiscal health. Check your weight. <laughs> I said, what? Do you know what I mean by that? If you don't check your weight, uh, there's an optimum weight you have. That weight is the weight that if you fast drive fast up to your highest extreme um, change of your body mass, your body can't go below. It's stuck. That's, your body is like that. Number two, you need to understand the principles of your health that the older you get, the reduced metabolism you have. That's why you go like, I don't eat much, but I'm growing big. You are, you are eating more than you can burn. So it's going to fat. When I say you're eating more than you can burn, you have reduced your diet according to you can't eat much nowadays. But nevertheless, you still are not burning it. So you're storing. At the same time too, sir, when you go beyond your normal BMI, you put stress on your heart. Because now your heart has to pump extra blood. Doc, baby, why? So the mass, you have to send more oxygen to the liver, more oxygen to your muscle. Because anytime you lift something up and you begin to feel pain in your hand, you know when you hold your handbag and you are feeling, lactic acid has gathered there and it's a production of oxygen to that's moving inside. So when you are feeling the thing, oxygen is not going as much. So one of the indications of low blood oxygen level is when you climb a little stairs, you are panting. It means oxygen is not freely flowing in the system. And that thing, people who sleep and they want to sleep like mommy returns, you cover your head like you are the, the, the Lazarus incarnated. Stop it. You are killing brain cells. Let your, let your brain brief, brief, brief. Number two, if you snore, ask for grace and find a bandage. No, I'm serious. They did a scientific test and they realized that people who breathe from their mouth age faster than people who breathe from their nose. So when you sleep, ha. Ah. <laughs> ah. 
Let me leave them. Let me leave it. When you see people walking, and that's why I told you that everybody's life is a product of the wisdom they know. So when you see us, we are doing certain things. It's not because we are... I told you there's one thing I've come to learn in life. God told me I didn't be deliberate about life. The way I dress, the way I talk, the way I comport myself, the way I hang around ladies, the way I greet people in public, it's all deliberate. Because if I don't practice deliberateness, in the day I'm lifted, my lack of training will expose me. Do you understand? Quen. Don't open your mouth. <laughs> sometimes intentionally press your mouth. But sometimes there's also a way to train your muscles or your face. That's how to train your facial muscles. I'm serious. Stretch it. Or go and get, you know those days, the boys, when they call it kankwe, you, you, be, you be grinding. That grinding of teeth, it shapes your face muscles. If you don't do it, I feel better than it droopy. Only droopy. Go and ask Looney Tunes, they'll tell you. I said, the both foot are all I'm Every muscle is a muscle that must be trained. Your brain, your hand, your eyes, every muscle is an eye muscle that can be trained. Your eyes, there's a way to train it. Don't just be waking up in the morning. You are doing exercise. There's an eye muscle you do. Look up, look side, look side, look down. You roll it. Yeah, I'm serious. Stand here and look to the corner. Your eye muscles are being strengthened. I'm telling you, some of you, your blurry vision is because your eye muscles are weak. It's weak, it's not working well. You massage it, say, you do like this. Have you noticed when you are not seeing where you do this? Yeah. Do you know what you are doing? You are massaging the muscle. You are massaging the muscle. You are massaging so you can see well. <laughs> so if you don't need spectacle, you just need massage. When you do this, every night before you sleep, every morning you wake up, you'll be seeing the mucus that will be coming out. It's clearing the things from your eyes. <laughs> Eat well. Eat vegetables, eat protein, more than carbohydrates. Especially when you are growing, yes, unless you are a Walantu Lansa, brother, you go and dig concrete, then you can eat the beans and the bread and the, and the kinky. But if you are not doing that, eat more vegetables. Learn to eat vegetables. Brothers, learn to eat vegetables. You will not die. It's not on me. You are not eating to me. <laughs> The Chinese have a way of eating. They don't eat to be full. They eat frequently, but they eat herbal and soups. Yeah, so the, the food they eat is a lot, but it is the type that digests fast. So literally, do not wait till they're hungry. So eat well, vegetables. One of the things that shows there's a problem with gut health, gut health is one of the first indications of a problem with your internal organs. That's why when they are, gut health can be measured on your tongue. When they do your eye, when you go to the door, they are looking at the color of your tongue to know what is happening inside you. Brush your teeth. Oh. You don't have an other problem. Morning, evening. You can't eat tilapia and sleep and expect to have a nice smell in the morning. It will smell like 37 mortuary. What are you talking about? Brush your teeth. If you can't brush your teeth, get tic tac, get mouthwash, and at least gargle it. Brush your Oh, now from a mo exercise. <laughs> hey, exercise. Hey, exercise. Can I say it again? Exercise. Now, one of the deceptions about exercise is people think they have to go to the gym. <laughs> That's not true. Can I show you the fastest way to exercise? You exercise best. In fact, people even go to the gym as, are not as fit as people who do it at home. Can I show you why? Number one. You need mental discipline to do it alone. Yeah. Number two, you also need the resistance of your own body weight against your body. Because if I go to the gym and I go and take a 50 kilogram weight, it's, it's, it's half my weight. I'm around 100 and, uh, no, 95 or 96 because of my height. So I'm around 96, 97. That's my optimum weight. So if I go and I go and lift a 50 kg, I'm 45. But if I'm doing push-up, I'm using 95 kg against 95 kg. Mm. So there's a fitness I have. That's different from somebody who is going to the gym doing this. <laughs> I'm not saying the gym is bad, but I'm just trying to tell you that that's why those who go to the gym, they add jogging and they add push-ups in their house. Okay. Are you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. Ah. So if you don't learn... 
So if you go like, I don't have a gym, no, you can do planks. You can do, dumb, uh, what do you call it, uh, jumping jacks. You, it, no, I'm, you'll be shocked. Just jumping jacks, what it can do to your body. This, one, two, you have no idea what it does to you. You have no, and plank. You put your hand down, you hold your stomach. It's like, oh, 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 so, uh, it shows a lot of things. It shows a lot of things. Exercise. God needs the vessel for the assignment to be accomplished. And the painful thing is that you see many times on our roads, 50, 60 year olds doing, do you think they want to do it? <laughs> They've told them that if you don't do it, you'll die. <laughs> so why don't you do it before they tell you you'll die? Do it early to prevent it. Do you know a shocking thing? 12 minutes of exercise can add a year to your life. Yes, consistently for a month. It can add a year to your life. You have no idea what it does. Sometimes you have to even sweat. Do some things, sweat before you go and bath. The weather is not cold. You have not sweat enough. Do something, sweat. Do it so you can plan. Anytime you are going to bath, you do something. Push up. And don't say you are a lady. You don't need bole. You need firm hands. I'm telling you. I didn't want to do a test right now. Some ladies will be caught corporate. But I'm supposed to say, now you understand. When he's shaking, that's the first way to measure that some things are hanging. Some things are hanging. You have to start working on yourself. <laughs> I didn't call anybody's name. Ah, my car, my car. My car, my car. <laughs> Amen. So what do you do? You do push-ups. Do push-ups. It will, it will firm your hand. If you're a lady, go and get this normal red, red dumbbell and just be doing something. If you don't have it, go and get a 5 kilogram oil, what a, a 2.5 ohm, and one to the left, one, fill it with water. Just hold it like this. Like that. Like that. <laughs> First Timothy 4 says, bodily exercise. Profited little. So there is a profit God expects still from bodily exercise. He didn't say profited nothing. Little. There's still a profit in it. Do you think Jesus could have carried cross if he was not a carpenter? Yeah. Ah. So Jesus was on the cross and he has a broad belly. Oh, I'm dying. Oh. Or Jesus carried the cross with a big stomach. Then, oh, oh, oh. Simon, help me. Oh, no, 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 no. Fit man. Fit man. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. You can exercise. You can jog. So you don't need to go to the room and say, we are going to look for jogging and swimming. And you say, yes, it's good that you jog outside. But if you can't get the outside jogging, you can do it in your room. Stand at one place. You can even go. I used to do it around my house because it was, this one is not round like that. <laughs> this one is a semicircle. But the one I had was round. So you can, I ran around my house. I intentionally set myself seven distance. And in basketball, we had something called suicide. Suicide, you run to the middle court, touch the floor, come up and come again. Then you do this, go and touch the end of the court. Then go to three quarters of the court, come and touch it again. When you see me doing higher and jumping and higher, hey, yeah. hey, hey. so I should have finished. <laughs> but I'm still preaching with it. I'm still preaching. God, if my heart is not strong, one day I think, Doc, Doc, you are the one who did my checkup for me. The last time you did it, he's the last person who did a heart checkup for me. And when he checked my heart, I said, Doc, what's I saw? Daddy, you have an athlete's heart. Yeah, because I used to play basketball. And I don't stop that because of that. Oh, no, no, no. To do, stretch yourself a little bit. Do this. Share. You don't know. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. One day a certain masseuse came to my house. And when he came, he, the, the guy was, he's a man who was doing that. He said, mm, Prof, I've never seen a very trying body like that. I said, Yes. I said, But near trying. <laughs> One is there relaxed, that is still stiff. I said, Yes. <laughs> I'm telling you, you have to train and exercise. Amen. Amen. Do you hear what I said? I didn't say go and join gym, I didn't say go and pay registration fee. <laughs> Don't come and say prophet, but you said we should go and join them. The next thing I'm calling you for a meeting, you are, I'm at Ebree Mountains. I'm part of I didn't ask you to do that. Ah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Financial health. <laughs> evaluate your financial health. Now, all these things I'm telling you is evaluation. No, evaluate. How much have you gained? Now, when you walk a little bit, you are breathing too much. These are evaluations you do so that you can make proper measures. You know what? That thing they tell you that early detection prevents problems. 
is actually first and foremost. That early detection is not finding the sickness in you. It's doing something when you start losing breath quickly before you get to the point where you have to detect something. Do you know what I just said? So the early detection has to do with you yourself realize that, hey, nowadays when I walk, after three blocks of walking or three streets of walking, are they be warming? Something is choking me. It's like you are feeling. That thing can be solved by just doing jumping jacks. So the blood begins to move everywhere. Or skipping rope. Go and buy a skipping rope. And just jump. Amen. Do you like what I'm preaching? Yeah. You evaluate all of this at your retreat, though. So you can. Yeah, I'm serious. So you can make. Look, if you don't evaluate, there's nothing to correct. The reason why people end up being surprised in life is because they don't evaluate anything. So they are surprised that things are bad. <laughs> Financial health. What was your giving like last year? Did you record? Were you a faithful steward of God's finances? When my daughter sent me a text. She said, Daddy, by the grace of God, 2020, I gave 14,000. Last, last two years, I gave 40, 45,000. This year, I gave 92,000. Wow. Yes, a young girl. He said, Daddy, by the grace of God, I've given 92,000 to God. I said, praise God. Don't look at me like that. It didn't come to me. <laughs> Amen. I was looking at 92. I don't want to say give, not me. Of course, family, blessing your parents, all those things are part of your giving. I told you all the five components of giving. Arms, giving to the poor, blessing your parents, honor seeds, you know, pledges, thanksgiving seeds. What again? Tithes, offerings, all of those is part of the giving. I gave 95,000 cities. They started from 14,000. Somebody started from 25,000, now they are 52,000, 55,000. What, what, what does this show you now? Wow. I had enough to give 55,000. Do you understand, sir? And that is money if you go and tell your parents they've never given their life before. Excuse me for respect. Do you understand? Then it tells you that if God blessed me enough for 55,000 to leave me, then what came to me? That's why you now do the analysis. That's why you have to be very rigid in your Titan recording. Because if I record every money I get as tight, I can track by the book how much I got in a year. Then when I do the math, because I give 10%, imagine this person has given, and give and take, they give out 45, 45% of their money. That means at least they made 100,000 that year. So now you have to do the math. The remaining 55,000, um, 45,000, where is it? This is how to do the evaluation. If I can't find it in the bank, I swallowed it. <laughs> 45,000. 22 year old. 45 a.m. <laughs> That's a land, though. No, do you understand? Because you see, what you give to God, it shall be given back to you. But what you can't record, it's not coming. That's the reason why God then I say, ah, then I have to increase the percentage of how much goes to God. Because if majority of my money goes to God, it will all come back. But if little majority goes to God, or le at least amount goes to God, it means I'm not getting all I... 100K came to me. God got 10K. 90K is gone forever. I will never see it again. I used to buy plane ticket. I used to go and sit in uh, a Kuala, ANC or something, some restaurant somewhere. I used to buy shoe. I used to buy suit. I used to buy shirt. It's expenditure. Expenditure is not a seed. It will never come back. So when I sit down and analyze my life, I can track my life that for 10 years now, I have graduated in my offerings. I've come to a point where now, something has happened to my finances. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Financial evaluation. And in that evaluation, you measure your giving, and your giving will be measured by your recording. Because if you didn't record enough, you don't even know what's left to you. So you can't track the money. There's no money trail. So you go to the bank, it's only $7,000 there. But when I check my annual salary, sir, it's 88K. So 7,000 minus 88K. I recorded only 22K. So you, you are confused now. Because now you can't track where the thing went. Like, what happened? No investment? No. I told you in financial management, in the spirit, generosity, what? Liberality and what? Spirituality. No, there's stewardship. 
It's not li liberality is the same as generosity. So there's generosity or liberality. Stewardship. Stewardship is the ability to skip what God didn't ask you to spend. Because it's not every day God will send a miracle of somebody. Ble One day I listened to Bishop Dagger and gave a story that he sent some of his pastors to go and buy a church auditorium to get an auditorium in Kenya or so. And when the bishop went, um, he said that he negotiated. The building cost was $100,000. But after negotiation, Osafu, the he, bishop said, go and tell him we can give him $15,000. When he went, he told the man, the man said, okay, bring it. Then Bishop Dark said something very powerful. This was around 2012 or 13, iron sharpen iron. And he said something that blessed my heart. He said, if he was not prudent to save $15,000, a building that should have cost $100,000, they've reduced it to $15,000, but the $15,000 you don't have. So God is even giving you a miracle at slash price, but you were not prudent to save. So you can't buy it. Be prudent, though. Be prudent. The God we serve, eh, he's so caring. He will not force you to give everything you have every day. It's not true. That's why first fruit, first fruit by faith, some people start here. Some people do only the beginning of their job. God and the rest is tight. Take 90 and give me 10. So God does not collect your money every month. He takes just a little portion and says the rest is up to you then you have to use wisdom. How much do I save? Because a day is coming, you need to put collateral down for that miracle you are looking for. But God needs collateral first. What do you have in your hand to get the miracle you are looking for? You do evaluation. I like the way you are quiet. Because you have to improve your finances. You can't go far if your finances is being difficult. I'm serious. Children involve money. Marriage involves money. Nails involve money. Wig involves money. You see the girls, the way they are smiling, smiling, looking at you nice, nice. The day they marry you, you will buy. When you marry, the woman's money is her money. Your money is our money. Stick it in your head. Stick it. Amen. And women remember. What's up? They remember. Don't do accounts. Say, so, honey, you owe me 1,005. <laughs> Sir, when? Oh, yes, I use it for this. I use it, okay. I can't say that. <laughs> no, that you owe, ta my wife owes me 1,005. It doesn't, it can't work. I'm her caretaker. I'm in charge of her. I can't say you owe me. I gave you 2,000 to go and do your hair or buy back. Then I say you owe me. So one of the statements husbands you should be wary of is, can you borrow me? When your wife said, can you lend me 200 Ghana? It's not a lending. <laughs> Brother, it's not a lending. That's why you have to believe God to bless you so much. When your wife asks you for money, you give her wallet. Mm -hmm. Give her the wallet. She'll enter the shop, remove her, she'll move. Uh -huh. And then in your business, say, sister, you just tell me what you took out so I can record it. Take the wallet. Buy what you want to buy. May the Lord bless the man. So you give your wallet to your wife. Full of dollars and CDs and pounds. When you travel overseas, you give your wife shopping money. Collect thousand dollars and spend. May the Lord bless you. Because in the spirit, Odokakra, Sikakra. Women love money. Women love. They were created to spend money. So have it so that they can spend. Amen. Amen? Amen? Sarah, your husband will spend on you. Yeah. Spend on you. Spend on you. Praise the Lord. Are you here? Very important. Financial health. You have to do an evaluation of financial What did you spend? What did you buy you don't need? What did you eat you didn't have to spend? What party did you go to where buying food for everybody? You didn't need to do all of that. You should have saved it. Do an evaluation. I'm serious. Because if you don't do an evaluation, then you will understand that in life, eh, there's a season God brought you money. And there's a season you should have saved it. Because there's a season God won't bring you the money. Yes. Yeah, I'm serious. I don't use this example again because, but when these people came to the house to come and take a seed for themselves, <laughs> what happened was that, imagine I've not saved somewhere. I'll be sending texts to people in church that, um, <laughs> why it has gotten to Canada. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't you think that? Yeah. But when you have a... Because I'm, I'm getting to the next point. 
So this is evaluation. After evaluation, the next thing you do is you receive corrections. You let God correct and direct the things that led to the errors you have detected in the evaluation. The Lord will now tell you that after a certain time, don't eat, drink tea. Yes, I'm serious. That's where you now get into corrections and redemptions through instruction. Correction and redemption through instruction. JM, in, in what does it say? Uh, 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 yes, James 121 said it. He said, put away all naughtiness and superfluity of what? Naughtiness and receive. So it means that, can you put passion or amplify? So we see what the filthiness and naughtiness is. He said, now abandon everything morally impure and all forms of wicked conduct. Instead, be sensitive in your spirit so that we absorb God's word. So what I'm trying to say is, is that all your excuses, all your reasons... I'm using it in that, ten, in that context. Forget all your reasons and your excuses. Why the money didn't go the way it went. Why your spirituality didn't go the way it went. Why your character didn't get developed. Put away all the excuses and receive correction. So that you can know that I have to avoid these friends. I have to delete this. Time. This year you have to do phone audit. Do phone audit. Anybody who sends you into trouble. You know that as soon as it's this fooling time, they call it Hello. You don't, it's like they have hypnotized you. As soon as you say, hello, by the time the hello, all is done, you are in the house. Delete them from your phone. No, you ought to delete them from your phone. Because you are going nowhere if you keep on like that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 18 verse 1 says what? Through desire, a man shall separate himself and intermingle with wisdom and knowledge. So in your separation, you go and seek wisdom. Please hear what I'm saying very well. Please, I'm, I'm, I'm truly begging you. If you don't do these things, this year will not change. I told you. The year does not change because the calendar has changed. It changes because you have encountered revelation. There's a way to go about this year. When you go for a retreat, receive instructions, corrections, the junctions you have to go to. Can I say this? Can I say this? Yeah. When Proverbs 3, 6 says, in all your ways, acknowledge him. He shall direct your path. What he was trying to tell you was this. God is powerful. Yet his power is only given to fulfill his agenda. The power of God is only released to fulfill his will. So if you don't correct what is off in your life, chances are that you will be looking for the power but it will never come because you are not even in the will of God. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. So you receive redemption. This is why you ask God for forgiveness. The Lord, I'm sorry for... Because you see, if you don't tell God I'm sorry for abusing your money, the next batch is not coming. You were a bad accountant last year. This year you must be a better accountant. Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me for how I accounted for your money. Please forgive me. Give me grace again. Release the money. Please, I'm sorry. Lord, I'm sorry for not taking care of my health. I ate junk food. I ate sweets. I ate pizza. I ate oily food at wrong times. Forgive me. That is a sin against your body. Amen. God has told me a certain age I'll get to it. There are certain meats I'll eat again. No, it's not even, I'm not even going to mention the age and what I shouldn't eat. So you somebody goes to me, because sometimes you say something, people are so inspired, <laughs> they don't wait for the speaking of God, then they go and start. Then the very next two weeks, you say they are vibrating as prophet, <laughs> insufficient fish, insufficient fish. I'm not going to tell you anything. The day I get there, I'll start doing it. Because God told me, says, there's a, there's a season when you enter into. This is, do you know how I get to know this? Evaluation. It is one of my retreats. God said to me that, Adam, when you hit this age, you will stop eating certain proteins. Completely. Completely. Some of you are lactose intolerant. You have no business eating milk after sex. Um, that your stomach ache is because of milk you shouldn't have eaten. Oh, milk, dear, dear. And the other You, you, you will see. No, no, no. I, I, you, you don't. You, it's not a prayer topic. It's not for your body. You are not a growing child. You don't need strong bones. Your calcium is enough. <laughs> hey, God. But you like milk. You don't know milk. You like milk. And milk in Nima, it doesn't move you. Lastly. Lastly. Please, all these points I'm giving you are what to do when you go for it. Write them down. Because I will expect that if you are really following and being disciple, these things we are teaching you, practice it. It will really change your out view of life. You will know the will of God. What to waste your time on, what not to waste your time on. You will know where your energy goes. It's not everywhere you go. 
It's not everybody you talk to. Don't waste your time. It's a waste of time. Lastly, planning and resolution. Remember what I told you about resolution? To resolve a picture. To see what a picture actually means. Resolutions and planning. Say resolutions and planning. Now, by receiving favor and forgiveness through redemption, that this area you went off, that area you went off, and God is highlighting to you one by one, you receive corrections. Then you ask God, how do I go about this? God tells you that this year, you must watch your finances, you must watch what you eat, you must watch the time you sleep, you must watch this, watch that, watch this. Watch. When God tells you all these things, you can see, whoa, this is what I've got into. Some of you take coffee too much, and you start experiencing heart palpitations. So there's a place where when you take, you should know the cup when you hit, God says, enough. Stay off for a week. You should know. I'm serious. I just felt it right now in my spirit. Somebody's heart has been beating irregular. It's the, it's the coffee. And your heart is connected to your kidneys. Oh, yeah. That's why when people have BP problems, it ends up in kidney problems. Your heart and your kidney is there. Because it's your, your kidneys that actually run the blood. And separate the urea the water, the sweat, all those things. So when you are, there are some things you have to watch what you eat. I, I stand up. I. <laughs> so your heart and your kidney are connected. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we here together? Yeah. Now the final thing, before God now gives you energy in the retreat, to have, so after, when you do this final one, then now you start your prayers. <laughs> no, no, you start with thanksgiving. No, when you're evaluating, how you going to evaluate? And don't me, don't me, don't me. Emotional intelligence. No. <laughs> you have to think. <laughs> it's not a prayer topic, <laughs> my friend. <laughs> think. It's not a don't me. <laughs> no, no. If, that's why you've never measured anything. Sit down. Luke 14. I'll show you what I mean. Luke 14, 28. He said this one. You don't pray. You sit. See. Luke 14, 28. See what he said. What did he say? Uh-huh. Oh, let's read together. I want to go. Intended to build a what? So when you are coming to do resolutions and plan, you don't stand, you sit. You must sit down and measure things. Sit that not down to measure. So this measurement is not, you know, name it, name it. No, you sit down. After Thanksgiving, you start doing the mass. Write it down. Emotional intelligence. What happened? Then God will begin to remind you, the person you insulted, the person you reacted to. Ah, zero. Oh, oh, oh. Lord, help me. It's low. This one, mm, wow. social. I, was, I didn't make any new friend. No meaningful understanding of relationships in my life. Zero. Then you are, make, you are building up. Then after that, when you come to the last one, planning and resolution. Do you know why I said what I'm saying? I told you resolution, you see what God has planned for you the year. Are you to buy a car? Are you to marry? Are you to buy a land? That resolution, you see God's picture for you. But not only so, after seeing God's picture for you, you plan. This is where Luke 14 comes in. You must count the cost. Many Christians don't plan. Thinking that anything will happen because they prayed. Bishop Oedipo says something that blessed my heart. Bishop Oedipo, he says, he said many times, the Christian that prays without planning is playing without knowing. For instance, I'm praying, Farua Pakatos Kepelebe, Lord Ephesus, increase us, Lord, increase us. Immediately I start praying that prayer. I sit down with my pen, watch the volunteers, train them this way, change the service, make it a training service. Do you know what happened? The reason why Dr. Joe gave us a prophetic word about ironic priesthood. After uh, 2020 or 2021, I was praying, I said, No, Ephesus is becoming like a church. Like a typical church, like Sunday they come, I preach, I minister, they go. I said, No, 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 God, this is not how we started. And God said, 2022, make it a training center. That's why 2022, I was very serious on schools. It was in prayer and planning. I wrote it down. Then I sent them texts. We are going to start school. School of marriage, family college, family this, family that. All this planning. It's not, no, you have to write. <laughs> and plan. No, am I, am I showing you something? Yeah. How, do you want to, how do you want to move from 10,000 to 100,000? There's a plan. It's not just wishing it. There's a plan. What did I do for me to get 10,000? Can I repeat it again? Can it be repeated? If it is God, it can be repeated. So if it is God, it can be repeated. Sometimes it cannot be repeated because God is giving you seed money. God is giving you $1,000 to start. What I do with the $1,000 will determine whether it will become $30,000.
So I have to sit and do mass. Lord, what is the move about this money? Then you're able to take steps to increase it. So the moment I saw that, God said, now make services examinable. examinable. It's in plan. You know what happens? The moment I move into that zone and truly we write exams, everybody is on exam mode. That any time I can be examined. So they are not listening to messages because, oh, prophet said we should listen. They are listening to messages because their life depends on it. <laughs> and the strangest thing in this life is that nobody wants to fail an exam, even if nobody will see it. The feeling that you failed alone is enough. Because, uh, interestingly, Ghanaians have been cultured with examination. <laughs> this message is... Oh, yeah, I'll ask you questions on it. It's examinable. So. <laughs> Sit her down to what? Count the cost. Whether he'd be sufficient to finish it. If I want to marry, for instance, if I tell you that there's a way I went about my courtship uh, before I married, I'm not saying use the same method. Also, if you want to cook jollof, he wants to cook jollof, she wants to cook jollof, please, do you use charcoal? No, I'm saying if you want to cook the jollof, you can use charcoal, right? You can use gas stove. Do you use oven? Some people can use oven to cook jollof. Good. D different style. But when you are using oven charcoal to bake, please, do you use bread for the jollof? No. <laughs> do you use, uh, what, do you, what do you use again? No. Garden eggs for the jollof? No. Or, uh, no. Kobe. Some, people, some people can use Kobe in their jollof. Yeah. Some people, they put charcoal in their jollof. Now, can you, no, do you do that. No, so it means that, my dear, no matter your style, whether you fry the fish or you, you roast the meat or whatever it is, the ingredients, no matter how you move about it, is standard. That means that if I tell you the story of how I married my wife, I'm not telling you that do it the same way. I'm just telling you that make sure that in your time, the ingredients are the same. The ingredients, the, the intelligence, the, the reason, the technique is similar but might not be necessarily the same format that that did data for three years. So me thought, no, 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 no. What is the formula behind mine? What is the reason for three years? That should be the reason for how many years you should date. Is it one year, one and a half years, two years? Now, in all my communication, I never said I was in a hurry to marry. So if you want to marry after a year because you are in a hurry, that is a wrong ingredient. That's what I'm trying to tell you. But if you want to marry after one and a half years, and the reason is not you are in a hurry, it can happen. Because the ingredient and the reason behind one and a half years is not because you are too late. The ingredients must be the same. Not necessarily the style of cooking or the method of cooking. As for the ingredients, it's standard because it is measured across board. Any marriage that has sufficed the test of time have ample time to develop friendship, to be able to know each other and the things that annoy you. In fact, you are not permitted to marry until you know what this person does that irritates you by yourself to marry you. Because they will shock you when they marry you. <laughs> ah, don't you think there's a... They, oh, men say be a woman. Yeah. You that you are sitting there, say men say you. <laughs> and if you don't reveal it now, it will show up in the marriage. <laughs> By all means. No, I'm telling you, nobody. No, you mommy. me. The, the cutest angel, there's a bat. Hey. So don't even say a girl, hey, oh, 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 like, and you are not praying, you are just, ah, this girl, this girl, this girl, hey, this girl, oh, you're spiritual, oh, boy, oh, boy, it's church, it's church that we are doing, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, when you get to music, she'll do it like this, waka. <laughs> Sit down and count the cost, planning. To see whether it is sufficient to finish. He said, if you don't plan well, 29 will happen to you. What will happen? 29 will happen to you. He says, because if he happily, he's in a hurry and goes to build the foundation and does not finish it, he said, people will begin to mock him. Because you didn't plan. You want to marry, you didn't plan. You didn't assess the whole situation. You enter the marriage after two weeks, you want to leave. Oh, yes. Oh, we have done this thing too long. One of my sons is about to get married this year. And when he came, I said, so how far? He said, this is what happens. He said, I said, yeah, so take your time. And he said, God, when they came to me, they wanted me. I said, it's not time. Next year. Not because I'm wicked. Because I understand that any marriage that is forcefully wrought with loan and whatever it is, there's stress. You are honeymoon, him, but nothing will happen. Because of you me now, show you. Because... I love they don't know what I'm talking about. You will get a call, your, your emotions will finish. Feel this, Nicole. There's Ozzy to go. 
Tell your neighbor plan. Tell your neighbor plan. After resolution, get the picture and ask God, what is the way to carry it out? Proverbs 16, verse 1. Proverbs 16, 1. No, when you begin to plan, then now you enter Proverbs 16, verse 1. It says, the preparations of the heart in a man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. That means that the same way Proverbs 21, 31 says what? Proverbs 21, 31. What does it say? Proverbs 21, 31 says what? Let's read together. One to go. Uh huh. Victory comes from the Lord. Last one is Proverbs 19, 21. Proverbs 19, 21. What does it say? Proverbs 19, 21. Let's read together. One to go. Can you shoot passion for me? Passion for me. Passion translation. So God needs you to plan so he can tell you what is wrong with the plan. That's the problem. You don't plan. So God can't tell you anything. That this one is not time. Have you ever noticed that if you don't tell God I want to marry, he doesn't correct you. We are all there. So to look like you are going to be a monastery now, like, <laughs> you understand? You are just like monastery now. Sister Mary, like you are there. Because you are not telling God you want to marry. And God won't force it on you. He will, he, will, he will stare a desire by a dream. But as long as you've not vocalized it, God thinks you don't want it. So he's watching you. But the moment you say, Lord, I want to marry this year. Lord, is it your will for me to marry? That's where God, do you know what happens? That's where God will now send you a dream or a correction that Adam not this year. The plan is that you marry next year. So prepare yourself for one year, for next year. Why? Plans exposed his purpose. Plan when you pray. Otherwise, you are playing. Plan when you pray. Otherwise, you are playing. Then after you are done planning, you now say, Lord, since this is the perfect will for the year, we now release supernatural energy to fulfill it. Now you now begin to pray. In this year, why? You cannot be ambitious outside the vision of God. Your ambition is only in God's vision. So now God tells you you buy a car. Then you threaten it down. Lord, I declare the car has manifested. Anything that, why? I know it is time. Ask see the Lord reign in the of the, then he will what? So it means even when you ask for the rain, he doesn't send rain. He makes clouds first. That means God will set you up for opportunities and the opportunities will collide with the plans. So that whatever you prepared yourself for, I told you the infrastructure for what is yours to manifest in the natural is the plans you make according to prayer. Otherwise his power cannot project his will. His power will only push his will to come to pass. And it is in retreating, you know whether it is time for the rain, sir. Because without retreat, you don't even know it's time. So you'll be, you'll be, you'll be going in and out by mistake. Hey, uh, Lord, give it to us. Lord, give it to us. It might happen, but you can't control your destiny. You can't map it out according to pattern. Because you don't even know if it's time. Then God will come and tell you after five years that, oh, you were supposed to get this thing three years ago. You're like, ah, how? Because you didn't retreat for him to tell you something. That it's time for this. Rise up. I'm coming to expose you. Then you begin to pray. Then as you begin to pray, the devil has no point to restrict your access. Because you know what to do. You know who to eliminate. You know where to put your money. You've asked God, where do I invest? Do I buy bonds? Do I buy gold? Do I buy forex? He'll tell you, go and buy gold. Which man do I buy gold from? Lord, I don't know yet. But if it is your plan, send me that angel for the gold. You'll be sitting somewhere. Somebody will come. Because you've already prayed for it. And you are not desperate to manifest what you prayed for. When the person comes, God will say, avoid that man. He's a fake. When the right person comes, God will tell you, trust it. Trust it. Because I'm not desperate. Your desperation can block his voice. Your desperation can block his voice. It will happen because it's his plan. But how will I hasten his plan? Because I planned with his plan. Tonight, it's been a long stretch. But I ask you today, in these two weeks, listen and listen. 
here and here. It's not time to backslide. It's not time to make wrong choices. Thank God I come your way at midnight tomorrow. But you are being trained as in Adulam to discover that you need God without God being put down your throat. And in that Adulam, you know there's something about your destiny. The captain of the host of heaven must make it manifest. And I can't be slacking on it. When I re- lost my SSC results and my card could not go to my secondary school, my parents went to church, my dear, and I lay on my face. I said, God, hear me from heaven. David fasted and you took the bridge from his house as I fast. And I was just a teenager. 13, 14 year old boy going to secondary school. I said, Lord, I lift my hands. My parents were shocked. Where did this boy learn this from? I was face flat. In only my boxer shorts, able. I said, God, it cannot be. You said I should go to infancy. Let your name be exalted. And my face was there. I said, Lord, look upon me. I said, Mommy, go to church. I'm not coming today. When they came to the house, I broke my fast in the evening. And I was lying face flat. That means that if you don't pursue persistently, what God said he will give you in retreat, I'm telling you, it can't be given. But they, not all, they, not all, but they that wait. It means not everybody waits. It is those who wait that mount up. And you see us standing here. God, God has grinded us. Uh, nothing physical will, cut, will touch us like that again. Do you understand? Yes. No, don't. Well, it's too late to go back. Do you understand? At least thank God my life has been an open book for all of you. It's too late for me to go anywhere. It, this is it. Paul said, this is it. This is the battle we have been called into. There is no circumcision, circumcision. He says, too late more. Everybody. We are in it together. It's not um, a little. We are together. French number. Amba. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. To wait. Are you here? Yeah. By the time we come on 29th, it's going to be in gatherings. What is the in gathering for? In gatherings of revelation? In gatherings of encounters? Some of you, God will appear like an angel. Yeah. God will appear in his glory. Like you will, have, you will transition fast in two weeks. What you couldn't see in 10 years of your Christianity. Two weeks. Jesus. You enter. Please don't joke with this season. It's not a season to eat and joke and relax because we receive the word. They that begin with speed, they will mount up with wings. And the only way to mount up with wings with speed is waiting. That's why God collided that waiting technology on the remit of the prophet's word. That this year, those who start with speed, in spite of the impediments, they will not see it. It's like a wheel. Have you seen a brand new car? When it's speeding, it's as if the spokes are not moving. Because the speed is too much. It seems as if it's standing there. This is what God is bringing us. The speed will be so high, it will seem as if there's no limitations or nothing stopping you. This is the year. Make Victoria Orenze's song. This year, you da, na, 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 na. this year, go and listen to it. If you've not heard it, go and listen to it. It will bless you. This is the year. Me, I know it's my year. This year, come on, get for the barrier. You know why? It crowns your year with goodness. That means no matter what happens in the previous years, there's a crowning day. And 2023, if you didn't know, I'm announcing to you, it's your year of crowning. God will crown your waiting. God will crown your seats. God will crown your labor. God will crown your fasting. God will crown your, 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 your Christ. He will crown it. Lift your hands to him. When I was praying for this meeting, I saw the angels of God singing a song. And the way they sang it, they sang it in prayer. And I said, Lord, why? And it moved my spirit. And I began to weep in prayer. I said, what is that song? Our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. Our 
our generation shall praise your name. Our generation shall pray. If anything at all, I remember myself in infant swim school. On the mobile 64 steps, I was preaching and I declared, In my time, O oh God, the heavens shall be the state of men. I remember. Over 20 years ago, sir. Tumberi dasta bada, turuko pa lamvimba dusta lai. Our generation, because of us, my generation will praise God. They will know the living God. No more farces, no more lies, no more tricks. Prophets that have swindled people, no more in my generation. No more. Prophets of the word of God, prophets of truth, prophet of the presence. Prophets who when they enter a meeting, they don't need to speak, but you can feel electricity. Follow them. My generation. My generation. Whatever it cost me, I'm ready. Whatever it cost me. Our generation shall pray. We are the gatekeepers of ages to come. If we fail, our children are going to be praying. For this ravenous beast that have been released in media, released in banking, released in society, but our generation, our generation, shall praise your name. Our generation shall praise your name. Oh my. God. Sing it as a prayer in your day, in your time. There was called the days of Peleg, the days of Elijah. Can it be called the days of Ajua? Can it be called the days of Penina? Can it be called the days of Anna? Can it be called the days of Margaret? Can it be called the days of joy? Can it be called the days of rejoice? Can it be called the days of Regina? Can it be called the days of Samuel? Can it be called the days of Abraham? Can it be called the days of Malik? Can it be called the days of Adam? Can it be called the days? Kalabakoski Pele. Shall pray your name. Lift your hands to you. Amen. 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 Lift your hands to him, somebody. Amen. Asking for strength in this new season. The eagle is going to break their beak. The eagle will remove their talons. The eagle will remove their feathers. In this retreat season, it will feel like you are vulnerable. It will look as if nothing is working. It will look like everything has slowed down. But the eagle is growing a new feather. The eagle is growing a new beak. The eagle is growing a new talon. Something is happening in the days of vulnerability. Father, I declare in this season the grace you gave me, the grace you gave my Father and the Lord. What I had by the grace of your supernatural strength, that even in GHS, we were fasting. After SS, we went to mountains to fast. Lord, I bless them with that same grace. I suspend every error in their body. A 
every infirmity that will prevent its exercise. I curse it by the power of the Holy Ghost. I release strength that just for three days and for many other days in the two week span, God will find you in intimacy, in privacy, in exclusivity so he can talk to you. You had to separate Jacob from the crowd and you told him your name is not Jacob. Your name is Israel. I bless you with the blessings of waiting. Isaiah 64 4 said that they that wait for all them that wait upon the Lord they will see what he has planned. They will know what he is thinking from the ages past. Lord may we encounter what you have planned. May we know what you have thought about. About our lives, our family, the timings, the seasons. May this year be the year we were most precise. Most precise. No wasting. No error. Most precise. Most precise. Lord, I declare, even in Jesus' name, for everybody that will yield, Lord, surprise them. Let there be beautiful encounters. I just saw that people had gone to retreat on their own and God was just appearing dream after dream. Vision after vision. Some of you will dream dreams. Angels will appear and show you your family history. They will show you where things were buried. They will show you who said what that has affected your life. Clearness. It will look like a deja vu because yes, I will expose the error and I will set you on the right track for blessings and favor to flow unhindered in your life. Father, I pray, let your name be exalted. Even in Jesus' mighty name, I declare so. I call it done. The Lord will visit you. The Lord will visit you. The Lord will visit you. In Jesus' name, amen. Clap your hands for Jesus. God willing, next week we are not here. The 15th we are not meeting. On the 22nd we are not meeting. We resume Ephesus on the 29th of January. And these two weeks is what we call the season of sabbatical. We'll be coming your way at midnight with midnight prayers. So tune in to Mixla at midnight. You hear us praying. Join us to pray for an hour. You will hear us again at noon in the day praying. Then in the evenings you'll be receiving audio parts. Part 1, part 2, part 3 will be playing the messages Dr. George preached at um, Father's Blessing. 31st night, the messages on the technology of faith. You'll be listening to them part 1 every day. So it means Monday um, that's excluding the fast period. So after the fast, that is Thursday, Friday, it's going to start. You'll be hearing those messages and be listening. Please tune in. We'll all be tuning in. So it means 5.30 in the evening to 6.30, we'll be listening one hour every day. Then in the morning, we'll, five, 12 midnight, we'll be praying. So those who are awake, wherever you are at a retreat, you can join the prayer time and be praying for the 14 days. We'll just be playing midnight prayers for 14 days. Then in the afternoon to you will hear us pray in the afternoon and the evenings you'll be listening to the word. Just flow with us on Ephesus Radio, of course. So you have to download the Mixler app and tune in. Um, those who are also benevol benev benevolent to us, you can send us the link on your statuses. But of course, because you're also on a retreat, um, try and starve yourself from this thing. Information, remember? Information. The more you are feeding here, the more you are preventing God from forming in you. So please, um, the end of this is for you to become better, not bitter. For you to come to a place where you and God have interfaced to know your destiny. If you are a volunteer, get ready. I'm going to ask you what the Lord said to you, which days you went on a retreat, where you went for a retreat. I'm going to inspect those things because I expect that those who are close in terms of working directly with me are picking the practices that we do consistently. So this year, um, all these things are going to be part of your examination. If you remember at least your birthday, end of year, beginning of year, if you remember at least, do retreat three or four times. Okay? And if you're a volunteer, I'll give you a different regime. Make sure you spend time with God. A lot of your problems, you don't spend time with God. 
go and sit down and spend time with God. Unwind. Unwinding is not sitting and watching TV. It does not solve the problem. That's why after watching the TV, you still come back and you are the same. Nothing changed. I have set the Lord before me. So if you are seeking the Lord, he must be before you so you can seek him. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Please hear me again. When I spoke about the prophecy about lockdown, I was not lying to you. I'm very serious about this. If you think COVID 2020 was an issue, you have not seen what is coming. I'm not causing fear and panic, but hear me well, the words of the prophet. There's something coming. If you don't build your faith now, Dr. George was with me in 2021. He says, Prof, I was praying one day and God said to me, he says, build your faith against what is coming. Something is coming. Build your faith. COVID scared a lot of you. But you were scared. Because they gave so many descriptions. When you get COVID, your nose, people died of COVID. What is coming? You need to bolster yourself in the things I'm showing you. Because they that know their God. You can't know God without prayer and fasting. Did you hear me? People are like, I know God by my terms. It doesn't work like that. Without prayer and fasting, you can't know God. You know about God, but there's a dimension only fasting and prayer can expose God to you. In, go and read the Bible. Everybody, Daniel was fasted. It was in fasting he saw God differently. It's in prayer and fasting you see God well. So please don't joke with what I'm telling you. Make sure you find time. I know you are busy in the week. You go to work, whatever it is, powerful. If you are going to work and you are working, find a Friday when you finish work, bam, phone off. Quah, you are off till Sunday afternoon. No phone. No WhatsApp. You like your phone too much. It is a destiny wrecker. Amen. Amen. It's high time you focus on yourself so that people to watch you on TikTok. Don't you? Are you not tired watching people? Somebody too much watch you. I said what? Yesterday, I, was, I think, I, Joyce, you are the one who put me on YouTube short. Eh? Yeah, Joyce just has cut, cut me and put me on YouTube short. I said, hey, who is that putting me out there? Continue, okay? No, worry. I'm not stopping you. Continue. Where it has got you to, God has told me not to stop anybody. So if you feel like you want to put my short out there, TikTok clip, there, there are broader things. Hmm? The things I say that you cut that part, pium, pium, just send the bullet out, huh? It's going to work. Hallelujah. So... Next week, we are not meeting. 22nd, we are not meeting. We are back on 29th. It's going to be an in-gathering service. Um, Baba Devan is going to come. So I'm hoping that we can get him on the 29th or probably the first weekend of, of February. He's going to be Ghana. So um, we're going to work around that by the grace of God. Hallelujah. Are you excited for this retreat? Are you sad? Are you confused? Are you scared? No, don't worry. It's a new thing. Sometimes when it's a new thing, it's scary. Uh, but sabbatical does not mean we have lost. If I, if I come back, if we come back on 29th and it's only 15 people here, I'll be glad. You know why? Jesus said, will you also go? That means that if the 15 come, then they were really the ones who sent us. The way of Jesus is if God has really called you here, you will come back. Yeah. Do you understand? Yeah. It's not that. It's not like, so don't worry. I'm not, I'm not afraid about anything at all. It's, it's not a normal practice, but it's fine for us. We need to be in the spirit for that. So go for your retreat. Find somewhere, go. There are many places you can get an Airbnb. The way you go and relax and unwind your mind, go and book Airbnb. Be there, pray. You can go to Abokobi Women's Center. Huh? Presby Women's Center. Hefziba is there. Anakazo is there. Find somewhere and go. By all means, find. Patmos is there. Go and find somewhere. But remember, get somewhere you can have pride, word, VC. Number two, exclusivity. Number three, intimacy. Nothing takes your attention except God. Praise God. Are you, are you together? Yeah. Anybody has a question? You want to confirm something? Anybody? We're good? Yeah. Don't send me a question after service. I'm not answering it. So if you have a question about what I just said about the arrangements we have, I said we'll be coming your way on Mixler. Of course, the Sunday, uh, what is the name? Sunday, 15th, yes, you will get a broadcast at uh, service time. That's from 3 to 6. We'll play 3 to 6. you see a YouTube broadcast, a read broadcast. That will be some of our teachings on intimacy prayers. You will get those broadcasts so that you can watch again. Uh, for those who are online, America for no. Number two, uh -huh, thank God I just said America. Um, God willing, this month and every month, I'll be having a special meeting for are people in the diaspora. That's uh, people in London, people in US, K 
Kenya, South Africa, Namibia, Nigeria, wherever you are, we'll have a special meeting for you in the diaspora. So if you are part of us, you are registered with us, um, you send us your link details on the um, um, Ephesus website. They'll create a Zoom link for you. Every month, I'm going to meet, because some of our people are now doing masters in London, masters in the US, all that. I can't leave them to chance. Else they don't stand a chance. Awa ba, awa. It's cold. Some of them, if you don't take it, they are not fasting. So I need to get everybody on track. I can see your face. So we're going to have a Zoom meeting. No hidden face. Show your face at every broadcast. And God and will betise you. I have a meeting. You didn't show up. You know I'll get you. So please, I'm going to have diaspora meeting once a month for the Zoom people so that sometimes when you're having service, because of the way the service is going, I can't prophesy to you online. I can have your special time and minister to you out there. All right. Any other question? Can we all stand to our feet? Oh, are you sad? No. Oh, yeah. Yes. So, we are going to take an offering, yes, of course. It's what they like giving, so everybody is telling me offering, 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 yes. Don't worry. Lift your offering to God. Um, Father, we declare that as we give, it multiplies unto us 30, 60, 100 fold according to your grace and according to the understanding you have granted us. We declare that, Lord, the devourer is rebuked and walk in the full blessing anointing, even according to your patterns and your purposes. In Jesus' precious mighty name, we call it done. Amen. All right, so we take our offering. Is the communion ready? Please, in this season, double your communion dose. Did you hear me? So every morning and evening before you sleep, take communion. Please listen to what I'm saying. Every morning when you wake up, take communion. Every evening when you're about to sleep, take communion. When you are fasting, don't stop. In your fasting, take it. In your fasting, take communion in the morning, take communion in the evening. Uh, God is going to do something even through that. Amen. Amen. your power you perform miracles and there is nothing that's impossible and we're standing here only because you made you move mountains you cause walls to fall with your power you perform miracles there is nothing there is nothing that's impossible as we and we're standing here only because you move Father, i turn this way far to your body i declare the wine becomes your blood we declare that it is the inoculation against any viral attack, any rising in our community and situation. We declare that Lord the trapeza turns things around. I release your power, I release your strength, I release your grace. Even in Jesus' mighty name, we declare so. We call it that. Amen. You cause a wall, you cause a with your power, you perform me. And there is nothing, there is nothing that's impossible for you to do. And we're standing here only because you made. Oh, and you. you
You did it, you made it, and I don't know, don't how. Don't know how, but you did it, but you did it, Lord, it. and I don't know how. February we'll have our first forest prayers. Amen. Amen. So get ready. We'll give you the date. We'll give you the location. Weather Miracle Center, Achimata Forest. It's going to be an 8 to 4 p.m. prayer marathon. So don't miss it for anything. I told you that that we'll pray, we'll fast, we'll read. I don't threaten. I tell you the truth. As soon as you hear it come from my mouth, like I slept. God is talking. So I'll make sure we do it. So we'll go to the park. Bush. It's in a hard drink, Akra. We'll go to the bush. So when you see the dust in your day, ay -ah, ay -ah, the whole day, this is your to change. <laughs> you know not the plans I have towards you. <laughs> the plans of good and not of evil. It's in my head. This year, carnality will leave you. Like you will see no, say no. No. That guy won't help us. Oh yeah, you will become too spiritual. Sin will not like you again. Lift your hands to him. See, as I move into this season, I'm obedient to the spirit of God. I am obedient to the spirit of God. I yield to the Holy Ghost. When he speaks, I respond in the name of Jesus. When he speaks, I respond. In the name of Jesus. Listen, you are going to have a blessed time with the Holy Ghost. He's going to give you plans. He's going to give blueprints. Some of you are going to get business ideas. Even in this retreat, you are going to, God is going to show you people you have to talk to. People, I mean, clear, clear. It will be clear. So don't miss this retreat for anything. Spend time with God. And I know he's going to show you something very powerful. And it's going to help you in this new phase. The students, please do it before you go to school. When you go to school, you can't do it. Do you understand? registration exam it won't work so do it now if you are going to school this week and do it this week if you are going to school next week do it next week before you go to school so that god can speak to you all right all right all right all right okay yeah 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 lift your hands gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer. Please sing with excitement. There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom. My steadfast love, my deep and boundless sweet. To this I hope, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to Him. Oh, how strange and divine I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken. For by my side, 
the Savior, He will stay. Jesus, I labor on in weakness and rejoicing. For in my need, His power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley. Through the deepest valley, holy. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome. Yet not I, but through Christ in me. The last stanza, please. The last time. Let's start. <laughs> With every breath, I long to follow Jesus. In two weeks, you know the words. You are learning it. That He will bring me home. And day by day, I know He will renew me. Until I stand. With joy before the throne, to this I hold, my hope is only Jesus. All the glory we ever want to Him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall be pitied, not by, but through Christ. When the race is complete, when the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Father, truly I pray for your children, dear God. A great while before day, you always went to pray. Destiny cannot be fulfilled without prayer. It cannot be fulfilled without spirituality. It cannot be fulfilled without diligence. Today I pray. In this generation, which is crooked and perverse. This generation that is faithless. This generation that murmurs and complains. This generation that has anti-God tendencies. You found us a people that are supposed to be light. We ask the Lord in these two weeks. We make spiritual gains like never before. That we put to action the words we have received. That destiny should be birthed. What is destroyed will be repaired. What is weak will be strengthened. The Lord that are in gathering. We don't just gather with twice our numbers. But we gather bringing in the sheaves of spiritual accomplishments. Of encounters. We will gather with encounters. We will gather with anointings. We will gather with advancements. We will gather with songs. We will gather with intensity. We will gather with capacities. We will gather as heaven will have us gather. Lord, I declare, every one of them is kept by the power of God. The Lord unto whom he is able to keep us from falling. The only wise God, I pray for them, just as Paul did to the church in Ephesians. I pray for them also. Unto you who is able to keep us from falling. You, the only wise God, Lord, watch over us. Keep us. That we will be worthy, found faithful and fit for every good work. I declare every troubled heart is healed. Every troubled marriage is repaired. Every troubled home is restored. I declare the Lord in this season may they find testimonies. Even in this three day fast as we begin. Lord, show yourself. Daniel became ten times better in this fast. We declare the Lord as you have declared this fast, activating the God mode. 
May the God mode be activated at the end of this fast. Even in Jesus' name. Let testimonies that were pending, miracles that have happened, let them occur with a tenfold intensity that we will know we have entered God mode. Lord, I truly bless them. You know they are always on my heart. I pray in the name of Jesus that, Lord, none shall be lost. None shall fail. None shall give up. None shall fall by the wayside. Watch over everyone. I pray for those online, those who have tuned in from Canada, from America, from Zambia, from Nigeria, from Ghana, wherever they are, those at the office, those in the hospital, wherever they are, those in Togo, those in Kenya, Namibia, Tanzania, Lord, everywhere we've ever received a notification from, from, from Bolivia, from Brazil, I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit, dear precious Jesus, watch over them. They are yours. You told James, Andrew, and John that you'll be back as you went to the wilderness and that they should wait for you. And when you came back, you went to call them. I pray the Lord, as we all go for this waiting, in our various homes, various venues, wherever we go to seek your face, Lord, appear, not one, not twice, not to three people, but to all of us. To all of us. Let the rooms we use for the retreat catch fire. Let it tend to the sanctuary of heaven. Let heaven show up there. Those who have never done a retreat before, Lord, show up mightily. Increase their test for further quest in glory. Even in the name of Jesus, cure cancers, cure illnesses, cure diseases, even through this fast and waitings. In the name of Jesus. Lord, thank you that you are the God that heareth us when we pray. We didn't choose to do this. You led us. We are obeying. Thank you for Ephesus. Thank you for this face. Thank you for the sabbatical. Thank you for the resumption that your name is exalted. And indeed, the power, the virtue, and the strength of the cross shall be seen even in this year. Go and walk in everything you've heard. In Jesus' name, you are blessed. Amen. Say after me, Lord Jesus, tonight I've realized the mystery of iniquity that is at work in the earth. I realize not submitting to you is allowing iniquity to work in me. Therefore, tonight I repent. I yield my member even as your instrument. I accept you, Jesus as my lord and savior today i enter the family of god because of your sacrifice thank you for accepting me and cleansing all my sins and my unrighteousness in jesus name amen